end, so I gotta get through it. And the only thing I know is to love what I'm doing. Never give up, never slow till I finally prove it. Never listen to the no's, I just wanna keep moving. Keep my head up when I act, head up, that's a fact. Never looking back, I'ma keep myself on track. Keep my head up, staying strong, always moving on. Feel I don't belong, tell my thoughts to move along. Push myself to be the best, die with no regrets. Live with every breath, see my message start to spread. And I had so many dreams, then you hit your teens. Life ain't really what it seems, try to find out what it means. Always do it on my own, so I gotta get through it. And the only thing I know is to love what I'm doing. Never give up, never slow. Till I finally prove it Never listen to the no's I just wanna keep moving Yeah, I put out all the start It's my only medicine, yeah Everything I do I'm just being genuine, yeah I'm sick of being screwed Feel my own adrenaline, yeah I do just what I do And I hope you let me in Let me in, yeah <laughs> I want the real stuff, everybody listen up Cause I'll only say it once I'm gonna show you all the path If you want it bad I'm gonna show you where it's at Yeah, how you can get it back Yeah, cause I ain't never done I'll be number one Working hella hard until I get just what I want Yeah, rise just like the sun Yeah, fatal like a gun Shooter's gonna shoot and I'm gonna shoot until I fall yeah. Always do it on my own So I gotta get through it And the only thing I know is to love what I'm doing Never give up, never slow till I finally prove it. Never listen to the no's, I just wanna keep moving. Yeah, I put out all the start, it's my only medicine. Yeah, everything I do, I'm just being genuine. Yeah, I'm sick of being screwed, feel my own adrenaline. Yeah, I do just what I do, and I hope you let me in, let me in, yeah. Always do it on my own, so I gotta get through it. And the only thing I know is to love what I'm doing. Never give up, never slow till I finally prove it. Never listen to the no's, I just wanna keep moving. Keep my head up when I act. Head up, that's a fact. Never looking back, I'ma keep myself on track. Keep my head up, staying strong. Always moving on. Feel I don't belong, tell my thoughts to move along. Push myself to be the best. Die with no regrets. Live with every See my message start to spread And I had so many dreams Then you hit your teens Life ain't really what it seems Try to find out what it means Always do it on my own So I gotta get through it And the only thing I know Is to love what I'm doing Never give up, never slow Till I finally prove it Never listen to the no's I just wanna keep moving Yeah, I put out all the start It's my only medicine, yeah Everything I do I'm just being genuine, yeah I'm sick of being screwed Feel my own Adrenaline, yeah, I do just what I do And I hope you let me in, let me in, yeah I'm grateful, oh yeah, able, oh yeah I'm stable, oh yeah, no label, oh yeah You know me, I have only a past I'm lonely, but damn, I'm going Okay. I want the real stuff, everybody listen up Cause I'll only say it once I'm gonna show you all the path If you want it bad I'm gonna show you where it's at Yeah, how you can get it back Yeah, cause I ain't never done I'll be number one Working hella hard until I get just what I want Yeah, rise just like the sun Yeah, fatal like a gun Shooter's gonna shoot and I'm gonna shoot until I fall yeah. Always do it on my own So I gotta get through it And the 
only thing I know is to love what I'm doing. Never give up, never slow till I finally prove it. Never listen to the no's, I just wanna keep moving. Yeah, I put out all this art, it's my only medicine. Yeah, everything I do, I'm just being genuine. Yeah, I'm sick of being screwed, feel my own adrenaline. Yeah, I do just what I do, and I hope you let me in, let me in, yeah. Always do it on my own, so I gotta get through it. And the only thing I know is to love what I'm doing. Never give up, never slow till I finally prove it. Never listen to the no's, I just wanna keep moving. Keep my head up when I act, head up, that's a fact. Never looking back, I'ma keep myself on track. Keep my head up, staying strong, always moving on. Feel I don't belong, tell my thoughts to move along. Push myself to be the best, die with no regrets, live with every See my message start to spread And I had so many dreams Then you hit your teens Life ain't really what it seems Try to find out what it means Always do it on my own So I gotta get through it And the only thing I know Is to love what I'm doing Never give up, never slow Till I finally prove it Never listen to the no's I just wanna keep moving Yeah, I put out all this art It's my only medicine Yeah, everything I do I'm just being genuine Yeah, I'm sick of being screwed Feel my own Adrenaline, yeah, I do just what I do And I hope you let me in, let me in, yeah I'm grateful, oh yeah, able, oh yeah I'm stable, oh yeah, no label, oh yeah You know me, I have only a past I'm lonely, but damn, I'm going I want the real stuff, everybody listen up Cause I'll only say it once I'm gonna show you all the path If you want it bad I'm gonna show you where it's at Yeah, how you can get it back Yeah, cause I ain't never done I'll be number one Working hella hard until I get just what I want Yeah, rise just like the sun Yeah, fatal like a gun Shooter's gonna shoot and I'm gonna shoot until I want Yeah, let's do it on my own So I gotta get through it And the only thing I know is to love what I'm doing Never give up, never slow till I finally prove it. Never listen to the no's, I just wanna keep moving. Yeah, I put out all this art, it's my only medicine. Yeah, everything I do, I'm just being genuine. Yeah, I'm sick of being screwed, feel my own adrenaline. Yeah, I do just what I do, and I hope you let me in, let me in, yeah. Always do it on my own, so I gotta get through it. And the only thing I know is to love what I'm doing. Never give up, never slow till I finally prove it. Never listen to the no's, I just wanna keep moving. Keep my head up when I act, head up, that's a fact. Never looking back, I'ma keep myself on track. Keep my head up, staying strong, always moving on. Feel I don't belong, tell my thoughts to move along. Push myself to be the best, die with no regrets, live with every See my message start to spread And I had so many dreams Then you hit your teens Life ain't really what it seems Try to find out what it means Always do it on my own So I gotta get through it And the only thing I know Is to love what I'm doing Never give up, never slow Till I finally prove it Never listen to the no's I just wanna keep moving Yeah, I put out all this art It's my only medicine Yeah, everything 
I do, I'm just being genuine. Yeah, I'm sick of being screwed, feel my own adrenaline. Yeah, I do just what I do, and I hope you let me in, let me in, yeah. <laughs> Everybody listen up, cause I'll only say it once I'm gonna show you all the path If you want it bad, I'm gonna show you where it's at Yeah, how you can get it back Yeah, cause I ain't never done I'll be number one Working hella hard until I get just what I want Yeah, rise just like the sun Yeah, fatal like a gun Shooter's gonna shoot and I'm gonna shoot until I fall I'm yeah. always do it on my own So I gotta get through it And the only thing I know is to love what I'm doing Never give up, never Never slow till I finally prove it Never listen to the no's I just wanna keep moving Yeah, I put out all the start It's my only medicine, yeah Everything I do, I'm just being genuine Yeah, I'm sick of being screwed Feel my own adrenaline Yeah, I do just what I do And I hope you let me in, let me in, yeah Always do it on my own, so I gotta get through it. And the only thing I know is to love what I'm doing. Never give up, never slow till I finally prove it. Never listen to the no's, I just wanna keep moving. Keep my head up when I act, head up, that's a fact. Never looking back, I'ma keep myself on track. Keep my head up, staying strong, always moving on. Feel I don't belong, tell my thoughts to move along. Push myself to be the best, die with no regrets, live with every See my message start to spread And I had so many dreams Then you hit your teens I think really what it seems Try to find out what it means Always do it on my own So I gotta get through it And the only thing I know Is to love what I'm doing Never give up, never slow Till I finally prove it Never listen to the no's I just wanna keep moving Yeah, I put out all the start It's my only medicine, yeah Everything I do I'm just being genuine, yeah I'm sick of being screwed Feel my own Adrenaline, yeah, I do just what I do And I hope you let me in, let me in, yeah I'm grateful, oh yeah, able, oh yeah I'm stable, oh yeah, no label, oh yeah You know me, I have only a path I'm lonely, but damn, I'm going I want the real stuff, everybody listen up Cause I'll only say it once I'm gonna show you all the path If you want it bad, I'm gonna show you where it's at Yeah, how you can get it back Yeah, cause I ain't never done I'll be number one Working hella hard until I get just what I want Yeah, rise just like the sun Yeah, fatal like a gun Shooter's gonna shoot and I'm gonna shoot until I fall I'm always do it on my own So I gotta get through it And the only thing I know is to love what I'm doing Never give up, never slow till I finally prove it. Never listen to the no's, I just wanna keep moving. Yeah, I put out all the start, it's my only medicine. Yeah, everything I do, I'm just being genuine. Yeah, I'm sick of being screwed, feel my own adrenaline. Yeah, I do just what I do, and I hope you let me in, let me in, yeah.
Always do it on my own, so I gotta get through it. And the only thing I know is to love what I'm doing. Never give up, never slow till I finally prove it. Never listen to the no's, I just wanna keep moving. Keep my head up when I act, head up, that's a fact. Never looking back, I'ma keep myself on track. Keep my head up, staying strong, always moving on. Feel I don't belong, tell my thoughts to move along. Push myself to be the best, die with no regrets. Live with every breath, see my message start to spread And I had so many dreams, then you hit your teens Life ain't really what it seems, try to find out what it means Always do it on my own, so I gotta get through it And the only thing I know is to love what I'm doing Never give up, never slow, till I finally prove it Never listen to the no's, I just wanna keep moving Yeah, I put out all this art, it's my only medicine, yeah Everything I do, I'm just being genuine, yeah I'm sick of being screwed Feel my own adrenaline, yeah I do just what I do And I hope you let me in, let me in, yeah I'm grateful, oh yeah Able, oh yeah I'm stable, oh yeah No label, oh yeah You know me, I have only a best I'm lonely I want the real stuff, everybody listen up Cause I'll only say it once I'm gonna show you all the path If you want it bad I'm gonna show you where it's at Yeah, how you can get it back Yeah, cause I ain't never done I'll be number one Working mellow hard until I get just what I want Yeah, rise just like the sun Yeah, fatal like a gun Shooter's gonna shoot and I'm gonna shoot him till I fall yeah. Always do it on my own So I gotta get through it And the only thing I know is to love what I'm doing Never give up, never slow till I finally prove it. Never listen to the no's, I just wanna keep moving. Yeah, I put out all this art, it's my only medicine. Yeah, everything I do, I'm just being genuine. Yeah, I'm sick of being screwed, feel my own adrenaline. Yeah, I do just what I do, and I hope you let me in, let me in, yeah. Always do it on my own, so I gotta get through it And the only thing I know is to love what I'm doing Never give up, never slow, till I finally prove it Never listen to the no's, I just wanna keep moving Keep my head up when I act, head up, that's a fact Never looking back, I'ma keep myself on track Keep my head up, staying strong, always moving on Feel I don't belong, tell my thoughts to move along Push myself to be the best, die with no regrets Live with everything See my message start to spread And I had so many dreams Then you hit your teens Life ain't really what it seems Try to find out what it means Always do it on my own So I gotta get through it And the only thing I know Is to love what I'm doing Never give up, never slow Till I finally prove it Never listen to the no's I just wanna keep moving Yeah, I put out all this art It's my only medicine Yeah, everything I do I'm just being genuine Yeah, I'm sick of being screwed Feel my own Adrenaline, yeah, I do just what I do And I hope you let me in, let me in, yeah I'm grateful, oh yeah, able, oh yeah I'm stable, oh yeah, no label, oh yeah You know me, I have only a past I'm lonely, but damn, I'm going I want the real stuff, everybody listen up Cause I'll only say it once I'm gonna show you all the path If you want it bad
Always do it on my own, so I gotta get through it And the only thing I know is to love what I'm doing Never give up, never slow, till I finally prove it Never listen to the no's, I just wanna keep moving Keep my head up when I act, head up, that's a fact Never looking back, I'ma keep myself on track Keep my head up, staying strong, always moving on Always do it on my own, so I gotta get through it And the only thing I know is to love what I'm doing Never give up, never slow, till I finally prove it Never listen to me If you wanna go, then I'll be so lonely If you're leaving, baby, let me down slowly Let me down, down, let me down, down Let me down, let me down, down Let me down, down, let me down If you wanna go, then I'll be so lonely If you're leaving, baby, let me down slowly Just come and come
can show me If you wanna go then I'll be so lonely If you're leaving baby let me down slowly Let me down, down, let me down, down Let me down, let me down, down Let me down, down, let me down If you wanna go then I'll be so lonely If you're leaving baby let me down slowly Just get on this and we'll come
300,000 plus live viewers. Now, we really hope we've inspired you and piqued your curiosity to new levels. Also, guys, let me thank you all for showing us tremendous love through your chats, your messages, your comments, emails, and of course, those emojis which you keep sending. So keep showering your love, and we promise to keep bringing you exciting, unique themes, and of course, some tremendous key personalities from across the world. Now it's time to take you through today's theme, which is eSports, one of my favorite things in the world. I got my weapon of choice right here in front of me. Now guys, have you ever imagined that there's a whole new world, a promising career ahead of you if you're fascinated to, towards gaming and sports? So continuing with that, we have a gameful evening lined up for you guys. We have with us today the gaming experts from the eSports industry who will take you through the amazing journey they've had as being pro gamers. Isn't that super exciting? I'm so glad to be here and I can't wait to interact with our amazing speakers lined up for the event today. You guys will explore the vastness of the esports world and learn about career opportunities it has for you guys. On that note, let me give a shout out to all the folks who are watching us on YouTube. Hello, YouTubers. How's it going? Guys, come here. Come towards us. You can join us live here on the link given in the video description. Take part in the amazing quizzes, most importantly, and win exciting exciting prizes so before we see what amazing stuff we have in store for you let us take a step back we'd like to announce the winners that we have for you guys the winners of the tricky quiz with michael and here they are on your screen who are the winners there they are Kavrin rodriguez we have abhininda ghosh we have part look what they won nintendo switch light and an electric guitar for part there we have Srijeev Roy, who's won a keyboard set. Kanak has also won one, and Janisha as well. Congratulations to all our winners. They were very tricky questions that Michael asked, but you guys answered them really fast, really quick, and the prize is just in front of you to see. So congratulations, and uh, keep going strong, guys. There are lots more prizes to be won out here. They're the winners, and look at the amazing gifts they've got. Folks on YouTube, come, guys. Join us here because we're about to announce the prizes for today's edition as well. Can we have the next slide, please? On our screen, you guys are going to like this one. Guys, we have with us the ultimate gaming quiz. It has super fun questions about your favorite games. And look at the prizes. A gaming chair. Nintendo Switch Lite is back on popular demand, folks. Your favorite gaming currencies and also the gaming gear you may need to amp up your gaming skills with. Show us some love through emojis and through chat, my little friends. There you go. There you go. Excited about the prizes. So am I. So how are you going to win them? Very simple. It'll be divided into three sets of five questions each spread across the event. Stay tuned for the whole event to increase your chances of winning. And now would be the perfect time to join the event. First set will be up soon. But before we move to that, we have one more amazing giveaway for all of you. Book a free trial class with us, guys, and get a chance to win a personalized book of esports signed by the main man, William Collis. Also, one lucky winner will get a chance to win a Nintendo Switch Lite here as well. Book any trial class, be it music, math, or coding, to take home the prizes in addition to, of course, the knowledge. Now, guys, without no further hold, let us have the first set of questions for the ultimate gaming quiz. Gamers, get ready for it. We're going to gear up ourselves. Please read the questions carefully, of course. You'll have 30 seconds to answer them. Guys, it is game on. Can we have the questions on our screen, please? The first question, the eSports Championship Series, known as EVO, typically brings in competitors of which gaming genre? Is it fighting? Is it racing? Is it platforming? Or is it real-time simulation? What do you guys say? Oh, we are moving. We're moving fast. And the polls are being lit up. What are the guys saying? You're moving towards 35% real-time simulation. It's taken a bit of a backseat. Fighting has moved up. Neck to neck between fighting and real-time simulation. What is the right answer on our screen? It is fighting. Fighting is the right answer. And well done, guys. A tricky one there. 36% of you got that. The Evolution Championship Series was first formed in 96 under the name Battle by the Bay. Today, many people consider uh, Diego Omera the GOAT of fighting games. His 20-year career 
includes six EVO titles and two Guinness World Records. Can you believe that? So a tough one to start off with. Remember, the prizes are big, so the questions are going to be tough. Second one on your screen. The Minecraft world is absolutely huge. If the Minecraft world was a real planet, which one would it be? Would it be Earth? Would it be Neptune, Uranus, or Venus? Oh, people are just running and zipping towards Earth. Is it Earth? A few of them are saying Neptune. Even fewer are saying Uranus. And the fewest is... Uh, is on Venus. What is the right answer? Let's have a look at the right answer. It is Neptune. Neptune is the right answer, folks. Only 13% of you got it. Ooh, pull up those socks, guys. In Stockholm, Minecraft was introduced as a mandatory part of the curriculum um, in some of the schools in 2013. According to the teacher, students learn about city planning, environmental issues, getting things done, and even how to plan for the future. So Minecraft is all about Neptune. Okay, guys, get ready. Next question on your screen. Here it is. What's the name of this vehicle from Fortnite? Is it the war machine, the battle bus, the aeronaut, or the dropout? What is it? What is it, my dear soldiers, my young minds? Which way are you thinking? You're thinking towards the battle bus. I can see a lot of you saying that. In fact, 60% of you are saying that. If you are saying aeronaut, just give you the right answer. Just give you the right answer on your screen. There it is. It is the battle bus is the right answer, folks. Fortnite has more than 350 million users across the world. And more than 40 million users play the game at least once a month. That is incredible. Okay, guys. That was good. You guys got that right. Now, which Pokemon is this? Is it Clefairy? Is it Nidoran? Is it Pikachu? Or is it Janet? Which one is it? You guys are thinking a lot of the thumbs going up, which means that you guys are thinking, right? I'm seeing a lot of you going towards Nidoran. Uh, what's it going to be? What's it going to be? What is the right answer? The right answer is indeed it is Nidoran. Well done, my dear minds. Now, lots of Pokemon names are puns. For example, Charmander is also so-called because it's a fire Pokemon which can charm you. All right. All right. Let's move on, guys. Move on. I think we have the question number five, the last one. Who amongst the following is not a gaming YouTuber? Is it PewDP? Is it Dan TDM? Is it Number Feel? Or is it Markiplier? Which one is not a gaming YouTuber? Tricky one again. Number Feely. Number Feely. A lot of you leaning towards that. A few of them are thinking Markiplier. What is the right answer? Let's see what the right answer is. It is number field. Well done, guys. Minecraft is the most watched game on YouTube with the uh, combined 201 billion views across channels. So well done. Well done. That ends your five questions. And it truly was uh, super thrilling. We're already on this fun ride to the world of esports. And this is just a teaser to what tonight holds. So stay tuned because there are two more rounds that are going to come up in front of you. We will announce the winners of esports lab quiz in our very next event. You want to be there to know if you won these wonderful prizes or not. All right, guys, now that we're geared up, I would love to start the event with the first session for tonight. Let me tell you about our first esteemed speaker. Now, this guy, he's a gamer, he's a professor, he's an author, and a podcast presenter. Co-owner of Oxygen Esports and an owner of Genji Analytics. We know you're waiting for this eagerly, and so am I. Because he's going to give you an insight on what it takes to become a pro gamer. A sneak peek into the lifestyle and the habits to ace gaming. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, can we please have William Collis on please? Hi, guys. It's an absolute pleasure to be here. Thank you so much, uh, folks, for everyone. Samir, it's great to be alongside you to give a little talk about careers in gaming and going pro. Um, so... Before I get started here, I just kind of want to see, can we get like as many emojis in the chat as possible? Come on. I want to see some like real love here, some real excitement. We're going to have a great 30 minute talk. We're going to talk about gaming. It's going to be a blast. Let's blow up this chat with emojis. Let's get pumped. Come on. Because this is hopefully going to be some of the best 30 minutes hour of your day. Um, this is going to be a really fun time, I think. Um, and actually, before I go into anything I kind of want to talk about today. I'm going to go into esports, you guys. I just want to open with two polls to get a sense of the audience here. 
So the first poll I want to open with is just a very simple question. It's no right or wrong answer. It's just how much do you guys enjoy esports? Like, do you absolutely love esports? Is it your life? Do you like it? Yeah, it's fun. You play them when you can. Um, are you indifferent towards them? Do you not like them? Like, I'm just kind of curious to get a gauge of this audience here. Let's push that poll live now. And I'm just going to see if I can see the poll results here, too. Um, I don't know if I can see where they're popping up, but I'm imagining we're getting tons and tons of people here saying that they absolutely love esports. Yeah, there it is. 73%. That's what I like to see, guys. And in fact, the really crazy thing here is basically if you add up the people who are indifferent to don't like esports, it's less than like, it's actually almost less than 5% of people here. And I'm sure it's going down, you know, over time as the poll answers come in. So this is awesome for me because this means we've got a super engaged audience. Um, and it's also actually really an important insight because it's typical of what's going on in the world today. Most people who are sort of, you know, young adults absolutely love games. And because esports is such a big component of games today, most people just by default are most of the young adults as they are becoming fans of esports. So this is really a next generation entertainment phenomenon that's um, upon us. And in that regard, I want to just do my second poll here, see how that's going to go to start here. I want to ask, how much do you guys watch esports? Now, this is a little bit different. Do you watch esports every day? Do you watch them maybe a few times a week? Like we're talking, yeah, I'll watch a Friday tournament if it's on. Do you never watch them? Like, oh, I'm never going to watch esports at all. I love playing them. I'm not going to watch them. Do you just tune in occasionally, say when it's a championship? I'm just really curious to see the overlap here. And as the poll results are coming in, the numbers are actually crazy. Almost half of you guys watch esports every day. Wow. That is so great to see. And basically another almost 25% of the other quarter of the audience watch a couple times a week. I mean, that is a ton of esports content to be consuming. And guys, just so we're clear, I'm going to come back to this poll in my talk because I think it's also another important insight into actually what's happening in the esports industry. So without further ado, I'm going to jump into my slide here. I'm going to jump into my presentation here. I want to see if you guys can see this. Um, this is esports and the path to pro. So we did our polls, those set the stage, this is exciting. And now I wanna tell you guys a little bit about who I am. I know I got introduced here, but just wanna give you a tiny bit snapshot of my background and sort of why I'm qualified to speak here. Um, so my name is William Collis. I went to Amherst College for my undergraduate. It's an absolutely amazing school. You guys should, I have the best time of my life there. And then I went to Harvard Business School to do my MBA. And I had a relatively traditional business career. I worked for a big management consulting consultancy called BCG. Then I did some time in Tokyo at a company called ISL. I then worked at Hasbro. But I got really involved in esports when I co-founded uh, with a classmate of mine from HBS, Rohan Gopaldas. We co-founded a company called Gamer Sensei. And Gamer Sensei was born from sort of a simple insight. It was I'm actually not that good at games. And I was looking around and I was like, you know what? When I wasn't good at piano, I got a piano teacher, right? Like that was how I learned to play piano. When I decided I wanted to get better at tennis, I got a tennis coach. I want to get better at games. Why can't I get a gaming coach? And so that was the insight that gave birth to Gamer Sensei. We raised several million dollars in venture capital for that company. Ultimately, it sold to Corsair, which is a big hardware manufacturer in the esports space. But that got me really involved in esports and gaming. And after that, I did a couple other things. Um, I'm just going to highlight some things I've done since then that I'm going to uh, talk with you guys about. And I'm actually going to go into a reasonable amount of detail about my background here. And I'm just going to tell you guys right now, there is a reason I am going into this detail. There's going to be, I'm going to come back and say, aha, this is, this is why I was boring you with all this stuff. So stay tuned because hopefully it's actually not boring. You'll find it interesting, but also there's a little bit of a plot twist that I'll explain as I'm going through this. So one of the first things I did um, is, or one of the things I've done in esports is I've founded a protein called OXG or Oxygen. Um, they're a large, very successful pro team, largely based in North America. 
They compete in some of the most popular games like Valorant or Rainbow Six Siege or Rocket League. Um, and they've done incredibly well in these titles. I mean, it's been a real privilege to sort of help build the OXG brand. And in fact, I think we have a little video here that we can show you now um, that just highlights basically, um, it's not gonna show any gameplay footage. Sorry guys, don't get excited, but it's gonna highlight something I think is important. It's gonna highlight the pro gamers and give you a little feel for sort of the celebrity that's building around pro players. So maybe we can play that video now. So pretty short video there, but I think um, kind of important because it's sort of this, I think, is what people think of when they think of esports, right? They think of like pro gamers who are somebody, they're aspirational, right? Like they're somebody you might want to be like, man, I'd like to be as good as that guy or that girl at this game, right? So it's an aspirational thing. There are people playing at the highest level and sort of tournaments and there's all this great, I think like that's what people most typically think of when they think of esports, right? And so it's my pro team OXG. Let me tell you about something else I did here. So I founded a data science company for esports. You might not actually think that data science has anything to do with esports, right? But actually I was thinking, well, no, like, look, if you think of stats and sort of analytics, those are incredibly important, incredibly important in traditional sports, right? Like where would baseball be, for example, without sabermetrics? And I thought, well, you know, just like games didn't have coaching, maybe there should be some, you know, stats and analytics around games. And maybe that's something you can do. You can start to do data science and traditional data science analysis. And so I founded a company called Genji, which ultimately sold to EEG. That's the business you see on this slide. It's Esports Entertainment Group. And they're actually a publicly listed company. They are on the NASDAQ um, in the United States. They're one of, I think, a few. I think maybe there's just two of sort of these large esports holding companies that's actually on the NASDAQ. And so they acquired my company. It's now called EEG Labs that does data and insights. But EEG does a bunch of other stuff. So they have, for example, um, you see on the slide, they have Helix, which is a chain of premium esports entertainment centers. So these are like places where you can show up in person to really nice venues with awesome peripherals and PCs and great lighting and you can play in tournaments and you can practice and you can socialize. And it's kind of like the equivalent of like, an awesome gym for esports, right? So they do these. Okay, well, it's a little different than what I typically think of with esports. Well, they also have a company called EGL that does tournaments and production. So they might, for example, do if you're a publisher and you want to be hosting a tournament and putting it out to millions of viewers, you might contact these guys and they would do everything from organizing the broadcast, developing the graphics, hiring the casters, figuring out the structure, managing the actual feeds, right? Okay, so. That's another thing that's an esports business. And then they also have this company called GG Circuit, which is an enterprise software solutions company. That's a bit like, whoa, I don't think of enterprise software solutions and esports going hand in hand. Like, what's going on there? You know what I mean? And so, actually, what GG Circuit does is if you go into any LAN or gaming center, I shouldn't say any, but most LAN and gaming centers, at least in North America, there'll be software running on all the computers that's powering the games being served up, keeping them up to date, et cetera. And that, that's GG Circuit. And this is a hugely successful, hugely scaled software business. And so, now we're getting a little further afield, right? Because I get that this is esports pros and playing in tournaments and flashy videos, but like data analytics, like entertainment centers, software solutions, that is quite a bit different, I think, than what I typically think of in esports. And then, in fact, let's talk about this book that I wrote. So I wrote this book called The Book of Esports. As um, it was mentioned in the upfront, you might be lucky enough to uh, get a giveaway copy of this. Um, so definitely try to do that because it's an awesome read. Um, but this book is actually sort of, it's actually very fun, honestly. I wanna, sort of like I really wanted to make a fun book when I wrote it. But it's a sort of theoretical overview of the esports industry. It's explaining how it came into being. It's explaining where the industry is going. And it's talking about, it introduces like critical frameworks to understand how things are evolving. It tries to make predictions about the state of play. And it ultimately argues that esports is important for humanity 
and for where the human species is going and what we think of in an increasingly digitizing world is what it means to be human. Well, that's kind of very different from esports, right? Like, I don't immediately think of writing a book as something to do with esports, let alone maybe a book of like gaming tips or something, but not a book that's sort of like an analysis of an industry and tying that to the future of humanity. That's a bit crazy, right? So like, what's going on here? And so why I went into all this detail about stuff that I've done is partly to sort of qualify myself to you, the audience, but it's also to say, these are all careers in esports. All of the things I've just talked about that I've done are ways that I've basically, you know, made money and found success in gaming. And while some of these things, like the pro team, might seem traditional and what immediately come to the surface, other things I think are very different, but very important to the formation and success and growth of the esports industry. And so one big theme of this talk, in fact, the theme of this talk I'm going to give to you today is if you love esports, you can think way beyond just being a pro gamer um, to sort of how you might want to interact with and participate in this industry. Um, because as you'll discover in this talk, esports is really a global phenomenon. It's absolutely massive, and it's going to be so important to all of our lives going forward. But maybe I've jumped in a little too hard into the deep end here, because I think some of you, based on the poll results, I'm guessing very few of you, but I bet there are parents watching and other things, and you're kind of asking yourself, like, well, what are esports? Like, what are they? I honestly don't know. Are they just the games my kid plays or like what's going on? And it actually turns out this is actually a pretty tricky question to answer. So let me try to answer it first with a visual. I, I think this, images like this, do a really great job of describing what esports are. You know, they are basically massive traditional esports today they're games that are played by you know as we saw from for example our early question with Fortnite, literally hundreds of millions of players they're organized into professional leagues right um there are professional teams that play and participate in this league they sell out massive venues the world's biggest venues they have huge broadcasts online by some estimates esports in the united states is now more popular than baseball and basketball literally more people watch it than two of the most established sports in the states and arguably the world that's pretty crazy there's huge prizing flashy production and it really is becoming sort of i, I think the sport of the future it is not you know kids sitting you know by themselves at their computer at their console playing it really has morphed into a pretty radically massive industry but when you actually dig under the surface and you're trying to define what an esport is it gets a little bit tricky right it gets a little bit tricky because you might say okay william this is easy i'll give you a definition these esports they're digitally competitive games that's fundamentally what they are right? Um, League of Legends, it's a digital game that you play against other people, right? That also works for Overwatch. That also works for Valorant, right? Like that's what these things are. But I would say, the, okay, well, it's an interesting thought. But let me give you sort of a question. What about chess, right? You think of chess, you're like, well, there is no way that is an esport. That's a game that was invented thousands of years ago. It was played before computers existed. That is super analog, right? Well, then why are big esports teams signing pro chess players? Why are there hugely successful streamers on traditional esports platforms like Twitch playing and talking about chess? And, you know, more to the point here, um, why? Why is chess this like ancient game being referred to in press and media and journalism as a breakout esport? What's going on? That, that feels weird, right? So this definition of digitally competitive games it's tricky because then you look at an example like chess and you say, well, that's behaving like an esports day. It's being, it's being treated like an esport, um, but it's sort of the antithesis of esports. And you might say, well, okay, well, I'll tell you what it is. I'll give you another thing. It's the big leagues. It's the organization around it. Because when I think of esports, I think of something like Riot Games and the LCS World Finals, right? And I would say to you, okay, that's an interesting thought that it's because these games have been organized and professionalized, right? But then let's take an example of something like football or say cricket, right? If all of a sudden the NFL or the IPL went away, would football or cricket stop being a sport, right? Like would that just, would it just not be a sport anymore? Because that, that doesn't feel right to me, right? Like defining whether or not a thing is a sport based off of if it has a professional structure around it, that, that doesn't, that, that feels like 
a bonus, but that doesn't feel like a necessary condition. And you might say, okay, well, well, give you another shot at this. I think esports is about money and career, right? I think it's the fact that you can earn a living off of playing these games. So you can dedicate yourself to them, right? And so you can actually get really good at them and invest skill and everything. And I'd say, okay, but then let's say you couldn't earn any money playing soccer, right? The only way you could ever make soccer work was just playing pickup games, you know, in a recreational league or something. Well, is soccer not a sport then? Just because I can't get paid doing it? That feels like a bad definition too, right? So when you really dig under the hood, defining what esports is, is quite tricky until you do this. And this is really my thesis for what's going on in esports today. I think what's happening is esports is the dawn of games. Um, as media properties. And this goes back to the first poll. The first poll I asked you guys, this is how many of you guys watch esports and how many of you play esports, right? Or how much do you guys like esports? And you saw the huge numbers for watchability, right? And that literally didn't exist 20 years ago. Like 20 years ago, like how did you watch? Like, first of all, what were esports 20 years ago? But like, how were you going to watch them, right? Like, what? So, what's really happening in esports today? And what explains how this class of competition is performing? So I'm going to have a sip of my uh, coffee here. Is that esports has woken up as a media property, right? Esports has become a media property, and what that means is now that people are watching it, first of all, it's very different than just playing it. There's a whole new, different way you can interact with your game. But secondly, right? Secondly. Now there's money that flows in through this because now you have broadcasting, you have sponsorships, you have marketing, you have commercials. You have, and so all of a sudden, the traditional ways that you might monetize games and gaming, say like trying to sell you a copy of a game or trying to sell you a DLC skin in the game, now that's shifted. Now it's really about how entertaining this game is to watch. And the most successful esports might not even be the most fun games to play. They might be the one that people enjoy viewing the most. And so I think this lens, if you really want to understand what esports are, they're digital competition, but it's taking its role as a media and entertainment property. And this is really fundamental to the success and the size and scale of esports because you might say, okay, William, I get that there's a lot of people who play games and I get that a lot of people watch games, but like you're saying, have a career in this space. You can have a career in this space. How big is this space really? How much money is there to be made in esports? And I'm proud to tell you, because I actually wrote the research paper on this. Um, esports is about a $25 billion industry. I mean, that is insane. $25 billion. I mean, this thing like didn't exist like 15 years ago. That's like, 1.5 billion dollars, and this math isn't quite right, but like bear with me. It's like 1.5 billion dollars of new jobs and opportunity being created every year. And the growth rate on the esports industry is phenomenal. Some people put it at like 30%. So if you're sort of saying, like, can I have a career in this space? Yeah, there's 25 billion dollars worth of job opportunities taking place in esports right now. That's why you can have such an expansive role in it. And that's also a lot of this is really fueled by this media side, right? That's sort of the secret for the industry. What didn't exist before was the opportunity to bring in broadcasts and sponsorships. And that fuels professional play and prizing. And that in turn fuels more gameplay and the big crossover between gameplay and viewership and all of those things. So, yes, esports is a massive industry. And that means there's a lot of money to be made in the space. And that means there's a lot of roles for people to play in the space. Now, I should say as a little footnote here, some people are going to say to me, William, I'm sure there's some people watching. So like, William, that's not the traditional number I see for esports market sizing. I've seen some different numbers. Um, you can read my research paper in IGE, but crucially, this number does incorporate basically everything to do with esports, which I think is a better estimate than some of the other numbers that are out there. Um, the biggest thing it adds that maybe aren't other numbers you might see is actually the publisher revenues from esports games, because I think it's crazy that you wouldn't count those in the size of a market for esports. Um, but that's a footnote just for anyone who asks, but 25 billion is, I think, a really good number for the size of the industry and how popular and successful it is. So I've told you that Esports is a $25 billion industry. I've told you that it's had this new dawn in this new era as a media property. Um, I've told you that, you know, there's because of all this growth, you can have all these new different ways to get involved in esports and have success in the industry, right? I've kind of told you guys all that stuff. 
how do you get involved? What do you do? What are the steps you take to sort of jump into esports? Well, you know, this is where I have to say, like, we got to talk about the pro side of things. Um, I would be remiss if I didn't start telling you how to get involved in esports. If I don't tell you a little about what it's like to go pro and the pro side of the industry, because fundamentally, I think probably that's why a lot of you are here, right? Like the talk has path to pro or something in the title. So let's talk a little bit about that. But let's also talk about what a pro really is. Okay. So yes, pros are awesome at games. They really are awesome. I think that's when we typically think of a pro gamer, that's sort of what we think. We think aspirationally, we're like, wow, I just, I want to be as good as that person at games. They are just so incredible. Like, how do they do that? And by the way, they really are really, really good. To give you an idea of how good they are, this is just like a thing I like to do. Let's take a game. Let's say big esport has like 100 million players roughly, right? So made up number, right? Let's say you're in the top 1%. That's really hard to do, right? That's really hard to be in the top 1% of anything for skill, of anything, right? Guess what? There are a million people who are just as good or better than you in the world, right? 1% of 100 million. Let's say you're in the top 99.9%. .9%. That is incredible. Can you imagine getting a 99.9% .9 score in a test? That's like an amazing score. You dominated that test. Guess what? There are 100,000 people in the world who are just as good or better than you. So pros are just so insanely good at these games. They live in this very, very top field of just amongst the very, very best. Because if you really think you can go pro in most games, it's probably only like a thousand people for a title that can really sort of be true pro gamers. So how do they get that good? How do pro gamers get that good? And the answer is, they don't just play games. And I think this is sort of one of the big realizations that people have when they really look at going pro. They think basically being a pro gamer is, this is awesome. I get to play my favorite game all day, every day. I love it. This is what I want to do. But the reality is when you become a pro and the path to pro is about seriousness and discipline. They are not just playing the game. They are practicing the game. Those are very different. And they're not just having fun grinding ladder with their friends. They are goal oriented. They are constantly seeking to improve. And this is the part that kind of, I think, sucks, to be honest with you. This is not fun. I just got to be honest with you. This is not fun. Like, I, I don't want to, um, you know, make you guys, you know, scare you away or anything. But the reality is, let's say you want to line up practice line up like grenade throws in like a shooter game right you might have to practice the same grenade throw on the same map with the same character thousands and thousands and thousands of times to be able to do it reliably in a split second moment under pressure and the only way to do that is just that same grenade throw over and over and over again that is really boring i can tell you pros do not they're not like some special breed of people who absolutely love repeating the same thing again and again but they want to practice because they want to win. They have goals that they are trying to achieve. They want to be able to hit that throw every single time, every single game, right? And so what this does is it turns basically a love of video games. It turns a hobby into a job. And you really have to be, I think, prepared for this if you want to go pro. Because you talk to a lot of people who've entered the space and say, man, this is like, this actually kind of, it's not what I expected because I lost my favorite pastime and I gained something I have to do, right? I gained a job. And so I think this is a real surprise for people is like going pro, it's more than just playing your favorite game. It's also, you know, actually trying to get good at that game. The other piece of this is what a pro really is, is unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, being a pro is about more than performance. Even if you are absolutely, insanely, insanely good at your game of choice, insanely good, marketability matters a lot in the industry today. And that's because, let's go back like a bunch of slides. It's because of this media thing I talked to you about, right? Because what's driving all this growth in esports is the media side. So it's not just that you're great at the game. We want you to be fun to watch. So things like streaming and social media presence are a core component to your success. So if you really want to be a pro gamer, yeah, it's great to get good at the games, but you should also be good at some of these other things around games, right? You should have a successful stream to show that you're entertaining to watch. You should have a big social media following so that advertisers, when a team picks you up, want to be advertising across your reach, right? So 
being a pro extends far more today than just being good at the game. And let's say you're in a narrow group of pros, like a narrow group of pros who are just so absolutely amazing. It doesn't matter. They don't have to talk. They don't have to have any. They're just like, there's so amazing game. You have to have them. Well, I would argue the stuff I'm talking about, this marketability piece is still important because it goes to long-term career longevity, right? Like athletes retire. Think of traditional sports stars. They don't play sports until they're 85 years old. They retire and some of them retire pretty young. Um, there's a cap on your career length. And when you retire, you probably want to still do things around the game and the sport that you love. A lot of those people do things like they, for example, they become broadcasters. Well, don't you want to have that option when you're done being a pro playing on a pro team? Don't you want to be able to become a commentator with Activision Blizzard or Riot Games? Don't you want to be able to have a stream to rely on to earn income? So even if you're just amazing at the game, this other stuff really matters. So the secret sort of for pro gaming is gaming skills are only part of the puzzle, right? But to reassure all the parents who are watching here, um, and here I'm going to give you guys some good news, uh, you do develop real skills playing games. This is, I think, one of the big misconceptions about gaming today, right? It's not just like, oh my gosh, you know, I'm wasting my time every time I sit down to play games. Games actually can really benefit you and develop real meaningful human skills. And if you're curious to learn more about this, you can watch my TED Talk on the subject, how video game skills can get you ahead in life. Um, yes, it's true, they can. But what skills do games develop? You might be asking. William, like, tell me, I, I want to know. Like, just because I, I, I'm playing games, I don't understand what I'm getting better. Well, let me tell you guys. Let me particularly tell maybe the parents who are watching what skills you develop with games. There's really three major categories of skill. The first is something that I would call mechanical skill. But gamers might refer to this as micro. This is sort of from the RTS days of gaming. Um, what is micro mechanical skill? Well, it's basically the ability to input many, many commands in a very narrow time window into games to accurately control your motions and your inputs in the game itself. And this is sometimes referred to as APM or actions per minute. And top gamers can get APMs above 100. OK, think about that for a second. Try to do 100 of anything in a minute, let alone 100 purposeful things. Try to say 100 random words. like. It's hard, and yet pro gamers are controlling their games with this level of finesse. This is really in line with, I would say, for example, um, like an instrument, like playing the piano, right? It's almost like this manual dexterity and all this stuff. So that's mechanical skill. It's another category of skill that gamers develop called strategy, or sometimes macro might be the term you might refer to this. There's probably other terms. I kind of like macro from the micro macro days of RTS. So what is strategy? Well, this is like, look, you're not just inputting these commands randomly, you're trying to achieve a purpose. And so it's not just how well you aim in a shooter, for example, it's how you rotate through the map, which sites you decide to pressure in in what order, what utility you deploy and when, how you flank and cover sight lines. I'm just using a random shooter as an example here. This is all purposeful decision-making. And it's critical thinking, it's analyzing trade-offs, cost-benefit, and it's done under pressure. This is oftentimes split-second momentous decisions. Well, that's a real-life skill, being able to think quickly on your feet and to make intelligent, informed decisions. Strategy, okay, that's cool. And the other thing games develop is leadership, right? Sometimes called shot-calling, maybe. I don't know, leadership. How do games develop leadership? Well, guess what? Most esports are team games. They're team games. And so if you're good in a team game, you're not just, you know, for example, playing by yourself. You are rallying your team. You are buoying their spirits when they're sad. You're motivating them to get better between games. You are encouraging them. You've built confidence and control so that when you ask your teammates to do something, they trust you and they follow through and commit to that action, right? That's a real leadership skill. They're doing all of this digitally right? That, that kind of feels to me like what, you know, say a CEO might be doing today in a boardroom, right? They're leading a company digitally through Zoom today. You know what I mean? So it's not, I think this is important because video games are interactive experiences. They're sort of different from like watching TV or something. Because when you watch TV, you are passively consuming. This is not always the case, but in principle, you're passively consuming. In games, you are actually part of what is going on. You are creating the narrative and the content. And so because you are actively doing something, you are actively developing. 
And many of these skills have real value in the real world, particularly the strategy. I was going to do a poll here, guys, um, in the interest of time. Let me just check. Yeah, we're running, I think, pretty far up on my timeline. I better um, rush the talk along here. I was going to do a poll. We'll skip it. But I think the strategy and leadership skills here are just so, so important to, to you know, basically success in a modern economy because so much of what we are doing is digitizing, right? So much of the work we do, how we interact in our offices is becoming a digital baseline. And what you're really doing when you play games, at least if you're playing games at a high level, is you're developing digital skills. And those have value in our increasingly digital world. And so this brings me to kind of a transition point because theme of my talk here is, I've told you, you know, this isn't the only career in gaming, right? The image of the pro, it's not the only thing you can do to succeed in games. In fact, gaming is the most multidisciplinary industry on earth. I'm really speechless when I think about how many opportunities there are if you love games to get in, involved in games. Like it's crazy. And I just want to go through examples with you now because it's almost silly how many ways if you love games, you can make games a part of your career without ever becoming a pro gamer, right? So let's do maybe an obvious one first. Let's say you like to code. Well, guess what? Video games are digital. You have to code them. So you could, if you love coding, you could turn that and your love of video games into, say, doing the net code for the next League of Legends, right? That would be a pretty amazing thing. Let's say you're into art. I don't know. Maybe you love to draw, right? Well, guess what? Games need concept artists. They need graphic designers. If you're into maybe more technical aspects, they need something like 3D modelers, right? So if you love art and artistry, you can get involved in games that way and have a hugely successful career in these sport. Let's say you like to write. I told you I wrote a book. Like I was able to take my interest in writing into a book in the industry. But guess what? These games have narratives, right? In fact, many major esports now are getting their own TV and television shows, right? So you could literally be a writer and create the worlds and the stories and the characters behind these games. Let's do an example that's not on this slide. Let's say you like music, some totally random music. Oh, well, there's no connection between music and esports. Well, guess what? Every time you start an esport, Music plays. There's in-house, there's people making the music behind these games. And not only that, some big game companies, like for example, Riot Games, they have their own label that does top hits, right? Top, you can literally be at the height of your game in the music industry, making music around esports. I'm going to keep going just for fun here to get you guys excited. Let's say you want to do a more traditional side. You want to manage a team. Guess what? Sports management and sports management degrees are important here. You want to run a team. Maybe you have social media skills. You could be a social media manager. You love games. You absolutely love games. You understand the strategy and the leadership. Maybe you're not so good at the micro. You can't quite break out as a pro gamer. You can be a coach. You can coach games. You can help You can help people improve. That's a whole industry you can help. Let's say you love video editing. You can be involved in the broadcast side and the production elements. And let's take even very, very traditional business skills, like very traditional business skills. Um, you might say, well, what does finance have to do with esports today? for example. Well, guess what, guys? It's a $25 billion industry. That needs a lot of finance professionals to support it. These are big companies that acquire each other. You need M&A skills. Marketing is a huge driver on the media side of this industry, right? So traditional marketing skills are valuable. PR skills are valuable. Like, basically, what I want you to take away from this slide is if you love games and you want to have a career in gaming, you don't actually, like, you don't have to start with the pro gamer thing. That's not where you need to go. Um, you can find other elements that you love in your life and you're good at, and you can build those into games and gaming to have a rich career in games and gaming. You have a place here. It's not just these guys on the left and, you know, or these guys and girls, I don't know, probably, you know, but it's not people on the left here with in black and white. Like there's a place for everyone in this industry with your skill set, right? So let's wrap this talk up with kind of a, a simple thing here. Um, how do you get involved? Like, what's a first step? So you've listened to this. You've been like, okay, William, you told me a bit about the industry, a bit about the media side. You've given me lots of examples for different career options in the space. You told me a little about being pro. Like, how do, you, how do I take the next step here? What do I do, right? Like, what's the first step here? And I'm going to give you some tips here. So the first thing you can do is, guys, keep playing games. I cannot tell you how important that is. Keep playing games. But do it with purpose. I really mean that do with purpose. And what I mean by that is, let's say you want to have a career assigned traditional as like a pro gamer. 
Well, don't just keep playing games with your friends. Start to ask yourself, what do I need to do to get better? And start to push yourself to do that. That's the first step to going pro. Even if it's boring, even if it's painful, set some goals for yourself. Say, you know, I'm silver two in this game. I want to be silver one in the next two weeks. Ask yourself what you need to do to improve and then do those things, even if they're going, because that's the first step on the path to pro. Let me give you a different example here about how you can play games with it with purpose. That's a little different, right? Let's say you're interested in art and the art side of games. Well, don't just keep playing the games you love, but start actually looking at the art choices that are made in these games and analyze it. Figure out why you like the character art in one game more and another game less. Figure out why one game's character art might be much more popular than another. Right. There's I guarantee you the art direction in games has so many brilliant, purposeful decisions in it that with a little bit of critical analysis, you can easily see and appreciate and be like, wow, I had no idea. That's why, you know, the Overwatch characters look like that. There's real. Re it's, it's incredible. And so you can start to think critically about the games you love as you play them. Another thing you can do is follow people in the industry. Like one of the things that's great about esports is because it's media driven, like you have real opportunities to interact with people in the space today. So you can follow your favorite teams. You can follow your favorite pros. And not only that, a lot of people in the industry outside of the team and the more visible side have public profiles. And you can probably get in touch with people that way, say through traditional channels like LinkedIn. Esports is a very friendly industry. You can start dialogues and have conversations. And that might be the first place to get an esports internship, let's say, for a summer. You can also think about doing something yourself in esports, building your own company. You can ask yourself, what changes would you like to see in esports? What would what do you wish existed in the industry? You know, that's how I started my coaching business, right? Like I literally asked myself, like, I want to coach, it's not there. I should you can think a little bit more expansively about the industry and look for opportunities like that. And you can even look to engage beyond the game in an even deeper level because there's a lot of content today put out around esports that goes way beyond the game you can read news sites you can start to follow what the publishers are doing outside you can even read financial statements like 10ks if say you're interested in the finance side of the industry that's esports that might sound kind of boring not saying you want to do but for some people listening to this talk you're like yeah i never thought that i could actually read the consolidated financials of the public game companies and start to understand what's going on under their hood financially and what's driving their success. That's something you can do. If that interests you, that's a way to engage beyond the game and get involved in the industry. So that brings you to the end of my talk. I hope it wasn't too boring. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I think I kept just time. I kept checking myself there. Um, but what you should take away from this is Esports is amazing. It's a fast growing industry. Playing games develop real skills in gamers, but more importantly, there are real careers in the industry and they are go far beyond being good at the game. So if you love esports and you want to put that together with other parts of your life, there's plenty of ways to do it because it's fundamentally one of the fastest growing industries today. It's certainly the mo most multidisciplinary. And I think it's really going to be the future of how people compete and maybe consume competitive entertainment products. So thank you so much for uh, for my talk. I'm going to stop sharing my presentation now and uh, let's go to maybe some questions or maybe an interview. I don't know. Hopefully that was a fun time. Well, it most certainly was a uh, like a fabulous time, a fun time. William, thank you so much for that uh, insightful chat. I mean, there's so much to learn about the world of gaming and the, and the aspects you can learn from it. And I'm telling you, uh, it's a wonderful opportunity for all our young viewers to be listening to these insights and what they can do with their career in pro gaming. And I had no idea how tough it was, firstly, to be a professional gamer and the number of avenues and opportunities that exist for the young kids out there to go and explore the love for gaming. So thank you for the insights, William. And thank you for being part of this wonderful uh, this wonderful uh, show that we have out here. Now, William, you got you got to help us out because we're giving out some fabulous prizes today. Right. I love getting and you got prizes. This, uh, let's do it. Yes. All right. Let's give out some prizes. But they got to earn the prizes, William. They have to earn oh. them by answering the, the the right answers to the questions we'll be putting forward to them. So if you're ready, we're going to put out uh, the Ultimate Gaming Quiz Part 2. You have William here, Young Minds, and he's going to be helping you out. He can give you some clues, some hints. We have the poll that's uh -oh. ready. And uh -oh. let's see which way, which way are the questions flow. Remember, wonderful, cool things for you guys to win. So if you guys are ready, William, you ready for it? I'm so ready. Let's go. Let's do it. The first question. What can you wear to stop Enderman from attacking you? What can you wear? Is it a turnip, a cabbage, a potato, a pumpkin? Oh a my lot gosh, of people are guys. saying pumpkin. 
Mm-hmm. What are you saying, this, William? This you want to give one. them a hint? What do I say? What do I say? I can't spoil the answer. I know the answer. I can't spoil it. <laughs> can, can you, what can I you will them say, towards the right answer? What I what I will say, guys, is I'll say Minecraft is uh, an awesome game. Um, this is obviously Enderman from Minecraft, and I'm betting actually one of the poll questions we didn't do here was which game was most popular and played here. I'm betting there's like a ton of Minecraft fan, fans out here. And the Minecraft folks are clearly going to win this one. So let's see. I think Pumpkin is our most popular answer. Were they right, Samir? Let's check it out. Pumpkin is the right answer. Well done, guys. Uh, well done. The game creator couldn't actually, uh, didn't actually set out to design such a monster like the Creeper. He was trying to create a pig, but accidentally switched the figures for desired height and length when inputting the code. So um, that's a fun fact for you. But Pumpkin is the right answer. And 74%, William. That's pretty good. The second question, what animals are seen in the Howling Abyss map of the game League of Legends, my dear young minds? Is it Poros? Is it Unicorn? Is it Mermaids? Or is it Rats? William, you want to like... Well, while, while we're doing this question, say this is a really good example about the world building that goes on in esports that people don't realize. Like, you think of just the competitive side, but isn't it crazy that we're talking about a world here with like unique yeah. characters and creatures? And so this goes back to like how expansive games are today. So I don't know. I think that's kind of an interesting thing to share. Actually, this looks like it's been a tough question for our viewers mm-hmm. because we seem to have an even split between Poros and Unicorns. Should we should we tell we them do. who's right here? This is a real one to weed out the champions. All right, let's give them the right answer. Poros is the right answer. Well done, guys. It was a tough one, but you guys got it at the end. And did you know, we give you a fun fact, the League of Legends is the second most profitable game being played competitively in esports history with nearly 20 million awarded in prize money since the game's release. That's a huge figure, William. Yeah, and that goes back to the $25 billion number. I mean, that's the size and scale of the industry. I mean, winning $20 million in any sport is a lot of money, right? Like, that's up there with what you get for winning something like a tennis championship, I think. So it goes to show you just, again, the size and scale of esports today. All right, let's bring on the third question. Who has the highest pace rating in FIFA 22? It's one of my favorite games. Uh, Let's see, guys. Some pretty big names there. Mbappe. Is it Neymar? Is it Messi? Is it Ronaldo? Now, guys, this I know you're all leaning. Really yeah, one. it is a tough one. But, I mean, I think that because I play this game very frequently, so I, I, I know the right answer to this. At least I think I do. And I think where people are leaning towards right now might not be the, it might not be the obvious is what I can say. It might not feel like that for me, at least personally right now. But let's give out the right answer, William. William, you, you want to guess it? Oh, there it is. Uh, well, I just saw the right answer. Um, yeah. you, you, just, you, know, you, you announced it. You're the FIFA. You were telling me backstage you loved FIFA. Yes. It was like your favorite game. This is yours. Go for it. This is my favorite game. And of course, Mbappe is the right answer. The pace rating of 97, followed by Trevor at uh, 96. I must tell you, I choose him all the time to play. And, you know, my, my online name, I my online name, which I have kept for myself, which my son makes a lot of fun of me of, is, uh, is Ludwig van Borga. I am Ooh. Ludwig van Borga online. As, as when I play FIFA, I don't know why I get that name, but I really enjoy it. Uh, all right, guys, let's uh, hope you enjoy the next question that comes your way. Here it is. Okay. Okay. Who has the strongest arms in Valorant? Is it Sage? Is it Killjoy? Is it Phoenix? Or is it Breach? So William, Valorant is one name? of my favorite games right now, guys. So I really want to see if we get this. Um I, you know, I'm actually disappointed by our chat here. I think I will say this is a very subjective question, right? Um, so maybe it's, maybe this is not, but I think um, looks like a lot of people are saying Phoenix, but maybe if we look at the art here, I think we have art on the answer key. You'll be able to to see as we lock the poll who who maybe some of us here think is probably the strongest in terms of arm strength, but let's, let's flip it over. Let's lock it and let's see the right answer. What is the right yeah. answer, folks? Oh, it's Breach. It is. Yeah, he's got, he's got those mechanically enhanced arms. That's got to be tough to compete with for strength wise. Yep. I don't know. I mean, I guess all the people in Valorant have supernatural powers, so who knows? But I, I think for this, it's a fun one. So it certainly was a fun one. And that I think oh. ends our uh, second round of questions. Thank you so much, William, for uh, helping out and giving them, or at least guiding them towards the right answers. Oh no, we we have we have one more. Sorry, we have one more. We have question number five. When you first get on Roblox, who is your first? friend who's your first friend is it builder man is it builder dude is it builder guy <laughs> or is it builder boy okay all right this one, I think they're leaning towards a clear one mm-hmm. this is this is i think one that it looks like people know um 
I will say we didn't talk very much about Roblox. Unfortunately, it's such a brief talk, or I should say Roblox. Um, people make fun of me because yeah. I, I always want to pronounce that game, that game differently for some reason. But um, yeah. yeah, like it's people, uh, you know, we didn't talk much about that side and sort of like the more sort of creation driven side of games, but that's another huge phenomenon going on today and another amazing yeah. way for you to get involved in the esports industry. But let's let's see the right answer here. Let's flip our slide. I think everybody got it right basically builder man did yes builder man it is and uh wonderful game and of course um, a very popular one at that so so good on you guys for getting builder man right and i think uh, there was only one or two where the kind of uh, overall leaning audience wasn't there but on the whole i think they've done really well remember the big prizes waiting for all of you so thank you so much that now ends the second quiz for the day and william now we also have um you know questions um the audience wants to ask you so we have a round of q a that's um that's wow. William. but but before we get there but before we get there i'd like to ask you something william um if you would have to give three key advices that you would like to address to our kids who aspire to become pro gamers what would those three advice be so the first thing is like just make like continue playing games right because like you do you have to love games and that is for anybody who wants to have a role in the esports industry just like play games play games you have to appreciate them you have to love them because they really are amazing and if you you know like passion matters in this industry that's the first thing a second thing i said and i think i touched on this in my talk is be prepared to do what it takes to get better like i really mean that like if you really want to go pro that is as much as i say play games going pro is different from just playing games all the time right going pro is really about like transitioning from this is a fun thing to do in my spare time to i am going to do whatever it takes i'm going to do what it takes to get better right and that really, the big difference there is the element of practice. I see so few people who play games and want to get good really start to practice. And practice is, like, you would not think, like, any of the soccer stars in the world got that way without ever attending practice. Like, they don't just show up and play games, right? Like, most of what they do around soccer is practicing. And so I would say practice is, like, the second big tip. And the third thing I say I really mean this is, like, you, you just don't try to live in a vacuum around games. Like, like I said, follow your favorite teams. Maybe tweet at someone and see if they tweet back. Like the interactivity in esports is very real today. And I think that can help the dream feel closer. Like when you tweet at somebody who's a gaming celebrity and they tweet back at you, like that makes the world feel real in a way that I think is inspirational and motivating. And so those would be my sort of tips for people. But there's a lot, you know. Yeah, thank you for those though, William. But uh, the questions don't just stop there. There are lots more questions that are going to be thrown at you. we got uh -oh. the Q&A now with uh, William. And of course, the questions are going to be the the questions chosen are going to be based on your poll. So um, the first question: Where do you get concepts, ideas, and the inspiration to build companies which become a huge success? When did you discover your passion for gaming? How has this helped your career? Which was the first game or project you had developed? What were the learnings and challenges? Let's see what the poll says. Let's see what the poll says and um, what question they would. Want you to answer? Oh, it's hundred percent. No, no, it's just moving up and down. Oh yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> that was hundred percent all over the place. Yeah, it's all over the place. I think it's leaning towards which was the first game project you had developed, and what were the learnings and challenges for you there. Well, yeah. So I think I touched on this. So the first big thing I did in in esports was the coaching platform Gamer Sensei, and you know, I'd say the learnings and challenges. The hardest part. I'm going to speak more generally rather than speak about this specific thing. I'm just going to speak about the general learning and challenges you might have in entrepreneurship, right? Um, because that's really what is going on in the way many people watching this might choose to get involved in the esports space. And the biggest challenge I think you have in entrepreneurship, honestly, it, it's a little bit of a trite one, but it's like taking, it's like believing in yourself enough to actually go through and pursue an entrepreneurial idea. Because if you think about it, entrepreneurship is the exercise in a lot of people telling you no, right? From the very beginning, when you're like, I think this is a good idea, and everyone's like, well, if it's already a good idea, it already exists, what are you doing? To actually trying to raise money, trying to raise venture capital, I cannot tell you how many people tell you your idea is bad. And these are really smart people running large funds with hundreds of millions of dollars, and they're like, no, I've thought about this critically, and you're wrong, right? That is really hard that's really hard and i think this applies to a lot of things that go on in life when you want to do something that other people necessarily might not believe in as much as you and this is the the biggest challenge i think is that is sort of getting over that hump and really trusting yourself right and i think that ability to trust yourself and have confidence in yourself it's the most important skill i think you can develop in your life 
I think it's really hard to develop. And it, it's a tricky thing because people say, how do you get it? I, I think the answer is at a certain point, you just choose to move ahead. You just have a little bit. I think we all have that voice that sort of says self-doubt and maybe like, I think people who are successful take risks. And that means sometimes saying, yeah, I, I know these other people have good points. I know this might not work, but I think it could. And I'm willing to stake a year of my life or whatever it is, you know, trying to build this thing or, you know, and that, and I think is really tough to get, but I, I will say the one thing that, you know, kind of encourages me about this and maybe helps people achieve that goal is like, look, like, you know, ask yourself, like at the end of the day, do you want to do it? If you want to do something and you want to do something badly enough, right? Then like life is fundamentally I think about making you happy first and foremost. I mean, that's maybe a shallow view. Maybe I should say, you know, there's obviously benefiting and certainly want to help other people, but fundamentally like happiness, I think is a driver in life. And if something is something you want to do enough because it makes you happy, well then go and do that. Cause chances are, that's a great way to make other people happy too, right? Like if you tend to be happy and enjoying what you're doing, the people who work with you, I think will tend to be happy and enjoy what you're doing. The things you do will be made with love. Right. So that would maybe be my little piece of motivating advice to take those first steps. And it's giving us great happiness to listen to you, my dear friend. Let's move to the next question, which is on esports and trends. And here are the three questions. Uh, what are the key factors behind blockbuster video games like League of Legends, Fortnite and Minecraft? If given a chance, which gaming world would you live in? Which is your personal favorite game? What do you think makes it interesting that makes it worth players' attention? So the poll is in front of us. Um, there it is. All right. Let's see. Well, it's leading towards what are the key factors behind blockbuster video games oh, like League of Legends, Fortnite, and Minecraft? I'm so disappointed. I want to talk about the gaming world I would live in. That would have been a fun one. Um, I guess. But, why don't you start with that? Why don't you start with that? Oh, that's so this is like an interesting one, because I think the the most fun gaming worlds to play would actually be pretty tough to live in. Um, <laughs> I think if I could pick uh, any world to live in in games today, I think it would probably be the world of Overwatch um, because I think it's a very like optimistic and although there's a lot of conflict and everything, and I think it's sort of an appealing and somewhat aspirational future. And I think this idea of like this crazy global collective of basically superheroes coming together is fun and appealing. And I love the art style in Overwatch. So that'd be mine. I'd go with that. Um, but you but, know the uh, one I would never live in? The one I oh, would which never one? live which in? Which one? Tell me, Samir. Which one would you never live in? I would never live in God of War. <laughs> That world is scary. I would not want to be close to that world. I would want to run miles, hide under one of those dungeons or caves and just find a spot and curl up and just sit there. Because outside is scary. It is that, spooky and scary. That That's exactly that's exactly what I mean. Like, great game, tons of fun to play. Absolute nightmare of a world to live in. You don't, yeah. want, to, you don't want to go there. Um, so maybe we should answer this question quickly. Key yeah. factors. So this is actually a great opportunity to say this is a huge topic that's addressed in my book. So there's actually a whole framework in the book that explains why some games are successful and others aren't. It took a lot of research, a lot of analysis, a lot of critical thinking. I, I think it's hopefully becoming sort of a standard in the industry for how people think about what makes a game successful. Um, but rather than go through all the different factors, because like this is a presentation in and of itself, I'll tell you one that I think is super important that people don't often think about and applies to all these things. And it's accessibility, right? A critical thing, if you want to have a blockbuster game, a lot of people need to be able to play that game fundamentally. If you're talking about a game that has to have like Fortnite, we said in the beginning, what, 350 million players? Like you have to have something that is incredibly accessible to reach 350 million people, right? And that accessibility means all sorts of different things. It means the pricing, right? Like Fortnite is like, you can get it for free, right? Um, it means like where you can play it, you can play it on mobile, right? It's not just on PC, it's not just on console, you can play it everywhere. It also comes down to things like the art style, like Fortnite's art style is younger. Let's be honest, it's a little bit more cartoonish, but that I think is intentional. It makes it appealing to a much wider demographic than say a very dark or scary art style would. So, you know, we can go into a lot. There's, again, if you really wanna know the answer to this question, read the book of esports, but fundamentally, I think accessibility is one of the most important factors in blockbuster games. I think it's one people miss a lot. They go, oh, it's really fun to play. Or like, oh, no, actually there's a tons of purposeful decisions that are made that make sure as many people as possible can play and enjoy the game. And that's a huge part of how you get to 350 million anything. 
Of the answer. All right. Next set of uh, questions in front of us. Here it is. To path to pro, the two options out here. Yeah? Apart from the technical skill set, what are the habits that an individual needs to inculcate in their daily lifestyle to ace their gaming skills? Or what skill sets are required to be a pro gamer beyond what you've already mentioned in your talk? Um, let's have a look at the polls now. It's 50-50. In case of it being 50-50, I guess you're going to answer Ow. both then. Yeah, Possible. yeah. Well, actually, yeah. Go for this it. This is a bit of a <laughs> this is a bit of a tough question um, because I think I actually I can answer one answer. will sort of address both questions. I think yeah. a missing piece that people don't think about with pro gaming today is actually diet and exercise. Like you might think of being a pro gamer, and you're like, well, why would like you, you're sitting at a keyboard, you're sitting at a console, but it wouldn't surprise you if I said, say, like every top football or soccer player in the world, you know, was practicing, you know, clear diet for performance, right? And thinking about how to exercise and improve and train specific muscle groups, right? And there's actually a lot of crossover with esports, right? Like if you want to be performing at the absolute highest level, which is true, right? Like that's what you have to do to be an esports pro, right? Like, again, we talked about the numbers, like 99% doesn't cut it for this, right? You want the high, you want every advantage you can get. And eating well and staying in good physical shape, there's a lot of evidence that that correlates with, say, your reflexes, right? So if you want to eke out every additional ability to aim slightly better in a shooter, of course you're going to do that stuff. Of course. So I think this is what I mean when, like, being a pro gamer goes so far beyond the game. Like, if you really want to get better, like, regular trips to the gym or whatever it is you enjoy to stay in shape and thinking about a healthy diet and that sort of balance in your lifestyle is actually very, very important. So it's an unusual thing, but it, it's something I think is important to share. So how about the duration of play? How long should the gamers play at one stretch so that they don't get tired of fatigue and they can come back and balance that out of the diet as well? Yeah, that's a really tough question because, you know, I, the reality is you just play the games a lot, but at the same time, you shouldn't be like, you shouldn't like you can play games too much. Right. And I think yeah. everybody has a different threshold for how long they want to play. Um, I don't think there's a specific amount of time that I would recommend. But what I would say is, again, like make sure that the time you're playing is purposeful. Right. So, you know, it's tough to stay focused and really drive for improvement for long stretches of time, I think. So, you know, just like people tell you with anything you do, you should take breaks, you should do other things like you should be having other things in your life around games to give you opportunities to step away, to recharge and to reflect. Um, I'd also say that, again, getting better at games doesn't just mean playing the game all the time, right? Like you can be analyzing your own play, for example, like watching replays, like that's something all pro gamers do doesn't involve at all clicking a mouse, right? Or maybe it does to keep yeah. your video. I don't know. But like, so I'd say like, yeah, but I, I would say actually, you know, people be careful about overplaying. Really, it doesn't do you any favors. And again, I think, you know, you want to have, particularly starting out your career, you want to have, I think, a lot of balance in your life. Um, because again, you might yeah. think you want to be pro. But as I said, there's so many other ways to be involved in the industry, you know? Perfect. Right, optimum use of your time. Take your breaks and have your fun while you're doing that. All right, the fourth question, esports and our surroundings. What are the challenges that you face to make uh, parents realize that the skills of the gamer child possess are not normal? How different or difficult was it to pursue gaming as an education or profession in the early days of esports? And how has your bestseller, The Book of Esports, been able to change the way people think about esports? The three options. Let's go to the poll quickly. And I guess they're all leading towards uh, what are the challenges that you face to make parents realize that the skills that a uh, gamer child possesses are not normal? How to convince yeah, the well, parents? Yeah, yeah. Wow. I'm surprised that one won. But um, yeah, I'll comment on that. Um, so first of all, the important thing is like, I think understanding is the big gap here. That's what's really going on because I think many parents, and I'm a parent, right? Like I think Samir, you said you're a parent too, right? Like, yes. you know, and I think like for a lot of parents, when they grew up playing games, games were very different, right? It was like Nintendo games by yourself. It was very isolating. Candidly, I think the quality of games, and this is a controversial stance, but the quality and complexity of games was a lot lower. They were certainly less interactive with other people, right? And so I think people have this notion of games and games really parents is something that like, it's just not a great way to spend your time, right? Like it's something that you do. It's sort of like watching TV, like, okay, it's okay to do, but you know, like you're not really going to get, like, it's not going to change your life. You're not getting better than anything. You're not growing. Right. Yeah. And I think 
the way to get across this understanding gap is sort of what I tried to do in this presentation is just show people what is happening in esports today, right? Because I think if you really understand what's going on in the industry, you sort of get it. And you're sort of like, wow, this is big. A lot of people do care about this. These pro gamers really are celebrities. There is a lot of money to be made here. There's a lot of career options, if even if being pro doesn't end up being what my son or daughter decides to pursue, right? So, you know, I, I, I think, how do you get that understanding? I think it's about communication, right? Like, don't just, you know, be playing games all the time, like spend some time to try to get your parents involved in playing games with you. Maybe try to watch an esports event together and describe what's going on. I mean, honestly, like, you know, one of the great things about traditional sports is the, the ability to like share it with your family, right? Like how many people here have watched say cricket or football with their mother or their father and had like an incredible bonding moment where you're just hanging out and having fun and like share that with esports, right? Show that that's a piece of what exists in our space, you know, and start to build understanding that way. Um, you know, because ultimately, you know, I think if you appreciate what's happening in the industry and where it's going and you start to really understand that gaming has changed from what it was before, I think people will take an open mind to then what you can do with gaming. Yes, and parents can be convinced. I'm convinced as a parent. What he's saying is absolutely right. Now, William, the next job is I have to go convince my wife. Now, that's the hardest job in the world. I'm going to try <laughs> that. That's never easy. But the world of gaming has changed so much, William. I'm, I'm thinking of the days when I was growing up from Contra to uh, your Nintendo where you are playing Mario Brothers to playing Spartan X <laughs> to playing Pac-Man to seeing the world now where they're open worlds. You can travel for hours and play the game the way you want to play it. It's incredible how the the transitions happen, hasn't it? It's so much more immersive. It's so much more creative. It's so much more coordinated. It really is. And by the way, that also makes it more fun. Like one thing I wish I saw was more parent-child gaming, right? Like, just yeah. like I said, you might, you know, watch a movie together as a family. Gaming is media. Play some games together, you know? And I think you'd be surprised like how much, how just how fun it is to interact because also games are sort of like a great equalizer in this regard. Like, you know, if you're maybe an older parent, it might be tough to play soccer with your son or your daughter, right? Like to keep up with them on the pitch, right? But in games and gaming, guess what? You can both use your control. You can both be pretty good, you know? You can both have a fun time. So I, I really think games can be really special in that regard. Or just get a recording of this entire show in William's uh, chat right now and go and show it to your mom and dad and say, listen, this guy's made a career out of it. I want to too. And I'm going to have loads of fun while doing it. And you guys can play along with me and have some fun. What do you say, William? Yeah, I say absolutely. That's great advice. Thank you so much, Samir. All right, William. Thank you so much for that. And before you leave, any last words of advice for all the youngsters out there who are listening to you? I just say, you know, have passion for games. Like, I absolutely love games. And I hope if there's one thing you took away from this talk, it's that. Because if you have passion and you follow that passion, you know, you think you'll be surprised at the success you find. So if you love games, you know, keep loving them and enjoy seeing where that leads you in life. Thank you so much, William. Wishing you all the success, all the happiness. Looking forward to having you back on this platform. It was truly insightful. And uh, the kids learned a lot. So did I. Thank you so much for being here. <laughs> there you have it. Uh, William was here with us. It was indeed a pleasure. And of course, uh, hearing his experiences. Hey, guys, a general reminder for what's on offer today. Can we have the slides, please? To remind all our young folks, we have with us the ultimate gaming quiz. It was super fun. Uh, questions about your games and look at the prizes. A gaming chair, Nintendo Switch Lite is back on popular demand. Your favorite gaming currencies. And also, the gaming gear. You may need to amp up your gaming skills. After hearing William, I want to get all of these for myself too. So it'll be divided into three sets of five questions each, spread across the event. Two sets are done. One is to go. So stay tuned, folks, for the whole event to increase your chances of winning. Folks on YouTube, come join us, guys. Join us in the link. And of course, you might still get a chance to win some of those prizes because there is one round left. Now, we also have one more amazing giveaway for all of you. Book a free trial class with us and get a chance to win a personalized book of esports signed by William Collis. Also, one lucky winner will get a chance to win a Nintendo Switch Lite. Book any trial, be it math, be it coding, or anything else, music maybe, to take home the prizes in addition to the knowledge. The links are available in the lobby area. So while you guys uh, book a free trial class, we have a special announcement for our winners of 18 under 18 for the second quarter. 
using tech solutions, turning them into viable products. Can we have the slides, please? The winners, here they are. We have Anchal Sinha. Congratulations, helping schools empower students to communicate problems with their counselors. This application addresses teen mental health. Very well done. Very well done. Our next winner. Our next winner is, uh, is Gavin Capriola. Uh, One-stop location for customers to meet all their insurance needs. This application is designed for hassle-free communication with insurance agents as well as having all their insurance-related data in one place. Can you think of that? Well, I could think he did. Well done, Gavin. Supreme. Our next winner is Mahika, grade 8 from the U.S. Uh, the website allows users to report damages or incidents in the area after a natural disaster and seek help in swift and efficient ways. Users can predict damages using AI and receive information about emergency contacts and procedures. Incredible. Damage control, the name of the app. And uh, the next app is uh, Inglisio. Yes, Inglisio by Soham Sen, who's in grade seven. This is from India. Uh, learning English language through advanced AI and NLP powered listening, speaking, reading, and writing in a single platform. Unbelievable, guys. I salute all of you. Congratulations to all our 18 under 18 winners. And that's amazing. This journey will continue with us. And of course, uh, we'll keep looking forward to more of you coming in and taking part in these contests. And and making some amazing apps. It's amazing the way the world is moving forward. Now, as we continue to ride on this highly knowledgeable journey on esports, let's talk about our next esteemed speaker duo who are here. And of course, they've been uh, competitive gamers in their college and came together as the co-founders of Edge Consulting, an organization that contributes to the growth and development of the esports industry. Not only this, Today's speakers are also associated with other bodies as well that contribute to the development of the esports as a completely new stream. They are none other than Joey and Chris, who we're thrilled to have out here. I know all of you are. Let's make some noise through our emojis and reactions and get them on stage. Joey and Chris, welcome to the show. Hey, how are you Hi, doing? Hi, guys. <laughs> hey there. Let's try hey to there. How's it going? Time. But you we're know what? Well. We're most excited. We're most excited to know that you're right now at a fantastic spot. All these young minds have <laughs> just learned about the possibilities of the world of gaming, and you're in the thick of things. Can you show our young minds where exactly you are and what's going on behind you? Yeah, yeah. First of all, uh, I'm Chris Scroggins. I think you did a great job introducing us, from what I heard. And I'm, yep. jo I'm Joey Gorizyak. Um, Yeah, and uh, it's great to be here, Samir. This is really exciting and. We are actually, like Samir said, in a really cool spot. We are at the H20 Esports Campus in Amsterdam. And no, we do not live in Amsterdam. We are not from here. But we were lucky enough to come visit an actual esports facility, one of the largest in the world, for a massive League of Legends event that they are hosting live right behind us. This is not a green screen. Wow. This is not a wow. video screen. This is actually about, about 20 feet from us, behind us, is the actual League of, League of Legends events happening right now. And so you can see down there the stage that players will be on. You can also see if we scroll this way. Hopefully the lights aren't too bright because there's actual production going on behind us. Uh, this is a large, large-scale event. And over there is the audience area. It's a break right now. The audience will be back in a minute. But you can actually watch all this on Twitch. Chris, how can they watch this? Yeah, so you can actually go to Esports Prime LOL on Twitch. So twitch.tv slash Esports Prime LOL. Um, it will be in Dutch. Again, we're in Amsterdam. Um, there might be closed captioning, <laughs> but this is this is just an opportunity. This is a perfect example. You see the players taking the stage. These are some of the best players in this region. Um, you know, uh, this is the Dutch Championship, so this isn't Worlds, but these are some of the premier players in the world. Yep. And so um, we encourage you to check it out. You'll see kind of their point of view on stage. We've been watching them get ready for this for the last what 10, 12 hours at this point, and. Uh, we're just really excited. We wanted to make this happen so you could see it from the main stage itself um, without being out there where it's super loud. I uh, also just got word that we'll have quiet for the whole presentation. So, again, we're at a live event, y'all. Um, there's people coming <laughs> in and out, and we're actually up in the hospitality area for the staff. So um, the staff is going to wait for us to get done because they respect Baiju and all the participants so much. So uh, we're just excited to be here. Um, a little bit about us before we hop into it. Um, again, my name is Chris. This is Joey. We're both um, instructors or professors at Shenandoah University in Winchester, Virginia, so a small town in the United States. 
Um, Joey is the director there. He's done a great job at developing it, and I teach a lot of our classes. Uh, and then we also have a company on the side that we've helped uh, where we can help other people develop and grow through esports as well. So um, we're just super passionate about the industry, and hopefully you all are as well. Um, we tried to make this as interactive as possible. Again, we are teachers, and we know how um, classes can be sometimes. So we want to make this exciting and, and engaging with all of you. Uh, yeah. But yeah, Joe, anything to add? Nope, I think that's it. But yeah, Samir, what a, how do we get started on this? What do we do to kick things off? You just start talking. That's it. I'm out of here. I'm going to be backstage listening to you guys intently as I was doing with William. And I'm telling you, there are a lot of curious minds who are ready and very eager to know what's in store for them in the future. So while you're sitting in that fantastic spot, we'll keep looking at you guys as well. And also a little bit <laughs> behind you to know what's really going on. All right. But we're focusing just on you. I'll see you after your chat. Sounds Perfect. good, Appreciate Samir. Appreciate you, Samir. Yep. All right. So while we've got here, there we oh, go. Oh, there we go. Yeah, we can see it's good now. Um, yeah, so what we'll do stuff. is, um, as Samir was saying, just introduce ourselves, as Chris and I kind of said. Behind us, you'll see this event going on the entire time. So while we'll have our slides up and talk about things, you'll notice that events are live in esports. A lot of things are going on. A lot of lights are flashing. There's a lot of stuff happening all around us. So really kind of a cool presentation that's going to be very different than kind of a normal presentation. So we hope you enjoy it. we got some great poll questions. We'll have a great quiz at the end. Uh, so let's get some good chat going in there. And we're going to have some fun. You know, that's what this is about. Learning about esports, learning about careers in the industry. And you just heard from William Collins, great colleague, great friend, and an even better uh, esports mind. He's, he's just fantastic. You heard some great things from him. We'll reinforce a lot of those same messages um, and show you some of the things that we do in esports because there's so much going on. There's so many opportunities with it. Um, and like Chris said, professors of esports at a small school, Shenandoah University in Winchester, Virginia. We actually have six of our students here in Amsterdam with us working the event. So we're based in Virginia, in the United States, working an event in Amsterdam and broadcasting all over the world to you all that live across the world because that's what esports is. Esports is a global industry and you can play against people from all over the world. You can interact with people from all over the world. So really, really cool stuff. So we just want to make sure you saw what was going on behind us as the players take the stage for game number two in League of Legends, a best of five series. So we will uh, hopefully hear the crowd cheering at some point when things are going on. But while we're doing that, let's go ahead and get to sharing the screen and get to the presentation that we have prepared for you all today uh, so that you can see kind of what is going on in esports and what those careers are like. Let's see. Did it work? We are getting there. Now go window, and then there, and share, share that. Also, just so y'all know, we do have chat pulled up, so uh, we can see some of the things you're typing. So if we see a great question or something along the way, we're going to stop and answer that, right? Uh, we're going to treat this just like a class where we, we, we can present and give and take. Uh, again, like Joey said, it might get super loud in the background. We do have several hundred viewers here live. Um, so... We tried to find a quiet space, but you might still hear it in the background. Um, let's see. Are we having a problem sharing? Yep. Trying to get this presentation shared. I don't think you all can see anything. So while we get this pulled up, a little troubleshooting. Welcome to eSports, right? <laughs> this is what you do in eSports. Um, trying to get the troubleshooting done, sharing. And so I see is gaming a career right off the bat. And yep. as we're... As we're um, trying to get the presentation to load up. We don't want to keep y'all here too long tonight. Um, we're going to talk about that, actually. And the answer is yes. I think uh, Mr. Collis, William, did a great job at talking about, um, you know, gaming from a pro perspective, as well as...
Always do it on my own, so I gotta get through it. And the only thing I know is to love what I'm doing. Never give up, never slow, till I finally prove it. Never listen to the no's, I just wanna keep moving. Keep my head up when I act, head up, that's a fact. Never looking back, I'ma keep myself on track. Keep my head up, staying strong, always moving on. Feel I don't belong, tell my thoughts to move along. Push myself to be the best, die with no regrets, live with every See my message start to spread And I had so many dreams Then you hit your teens Life ain't really what it seems Try to find out what it means Always do it on my own So I gotta get through it And the only thing I know Is to love what I'm doing Never give up, never slow Till I finally prove it Never listen to the no's I just wanna keep moving Yeah, I put out all the heart It's my only medicine Yeah, everything I do I'm just being genuine Yeah, I'm sick of being screwed Feel my own Adrenaline, yeah, I do just what I do And I hope you let me in, let me in, yeah All right <laughs> uh, Thank you very much for your patience uh, I don't know what happened uh, The presentation is kind of stop, But uh, of course We need to get a back and then I think it's great. And so we are ready to rock and roll. Again, some of these are problems are tested. They're doing some testing and providing. But we appreciate you hanging out with us. We know that you've been here for a while. So we can talk about this. We'll get back into it. So who has to talk? It's almost not so fast. Uh, we're not quite there. So we'll get there. I guess you can really get into it. Interesting stuff. Always do it on my own, so I gotta get through it. And the only thing I know is to love what I'm doing. Never give up, never slow, till I finally prove it. Never listen to the no's, I just wanna keep moving. Keep my head up when I act, head up, that's a fact. Never looking back, I'ma keep myself on track. Keep my head up, staying strong, always moving on. Feel I don't belong, tell my thoughts to move along. Push myself to be the best, die with no regrets, live with everybody. 
breath See my message start to spread And I had so many dreams Then you hit your teens Life ain't really what it seems Try to find out what it means Always do it on my own So I gotta get through it And the only thing I know Is to love what I'm doing Never give up, never slow Till I finally prove it Never listen to the no's I just wanna keep moving Yeah, I put out all this art It's my only medicine Yeah, everything I do I'm just being genuine yeah, I'm sick of being screwed, feel my own adrenaline Yeah, I do just what I do, and I hope you let me in, let me in, yeah All right, can y'all hear us now? Yeah, let's try this again <laughs> Again, trying to make sure that you all can hear us and uh, get this presentation going There we go, lots of yeses in the chat Awesome, yep, Here awesome. we go, we're so, going to get through it <laughs> So with this live event, one of the one of these struggles is it's using a ton of internet behind us, right? And so we are actually borrowing part of the internet from their connection. Um, usually there's two separate networks, if you will, um, but because they needed all the internet, they turned it into one. So we're gonna try to get through this. We wanted to give you this live experience. If we keep going in and out, we'll move across the way. Um, I'm talking really loud, so if I'm talking too loud, please let me know. Yeah, let uh, us know. Put it in the chat. We are trying to keep up with it. There's a lot going on over there. There's a lot going on here, but let us know. We're going to make this the best possible presentation you, you can have. No, sir. It's good. All right. I appreciate y'all. Um, if y'all want to go ahead and – so they are sharing the slide, so you'll hear us say next slide. Just know that we're, we're queuing the presentation. Um, so, yep, yeah. next slide. If you want to go next slide? We're good. And so we have a poll question to start out. You have probably heard the term esports, but you do you think esports and video games are different or the same thing? We want to see the poll. Yep. So we know that William Collis talked a little bit about this. So hopefully you have an idea at this point. And if not, um, then let, just take a guess. Let us know if you think that esports and video games are different or the same thing. And as we're getting them in here, it looks like getting a lot of answers in. Let's see. Let's see what we've got here. So far, we got about 64% different, 32 the same, sometimes the same. No idea. You're kind of like me. No idea. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I have an idea. I have a guess at least. Been doing this for a while. Um, yeah. So, Chris, what do you think? Yeah, I think that there are definitely elements of video games, obviously, within esports. It's the medium in which we're playing it through, um, but they are a little bit different. Um, and, and so, Joey, do you, what do you think? Oh, I think sometimes they're the same, sometimes they are different. That's my opinion. Um, because esports are competitive video games, right? So video games are video games. Just when they're competitive, they turn into esports. So I think sometimes you might be able to consider them the same thing, but for the most part, esports and video games are very different from each other, and there are certain things that make them different. Yeah, yeah. And so if we go to the next slide, we'll actually kind of talk about some of the elements of esports. Um, so when I tell you to click, please click. The, the words will show up on the screen. Um, a simple definition of esports, and I think uh, William Collis did a great job at talking about this, but this is competitive video game competitions, right? Um, like you see behind us, the pro players sitting within 20 feet of us. It's crazy. Uh, but there's more to it than that, right? You see top left, there's spectators. Um, if we were to turn this computer just to the left, there's about 250 people watching here in person. I think there's several thousand watching online, just like you're watching us from home. Um, so... Casual gaming or video games are typically just played with your friends in a living room or, you know, you go over to your friend's house to play. These are actually have spectators. If you go next, you will also see the word organized pop up in the top corner. So there's spectators that are watching There's and it's organized. Uh, having a team is one example. You see, um, this is an organized event. There's a staff. We cannot hear. All right. Let me know if you can hear me. All right. And so it's organized. And there's teams, there's a main stage behind us, uh, there's two organizations playing. Yes, perfect, thank you, thank you. Um, there's a broadcast around it, so we have people watching all around the world, watching organized teams and leagues, which is amazing. Next one here, revenue. Revenue, if you know what revenue is, post it in chat. What do you think revenue means? Um, revenue, as you're typing, basically means money. Yes, earnings, really? perfect. So not only are these players playing for money and joe if you lean a little bit to the left you can't see it but there's a big trophy right there if you look right there <laughs> there's a big trophy but they're also playing for money and organizations make money the tournament makes money 
There's a lot of money going around this industry. You, you heard William Collis talk about $25 billion floating around the industry in different ways. Um, typically, you see about $1.1 billion, But again, William said that his was all-encompassing, right? And so we have a ton of money floating around the industry. And part of it is player revenue or player salaries. But it's also tournament winnings and other things. So loud. Okay, just let me know. Keep letting me know because we keep hearing different stuff. <laughs> and then what's the last one here? Characteristic of esports? Skill. Again, I play casually. Joey plays casually. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of you play casually. I used to play competitively and get to play online. I never really traveled like these guys are doing back here. Um, but it takes a high level of skill and it takes a lot of training and dedication. Some of these players are playing up to 60 hours a week, right? And so like William said, it's hard to balance that, but you got to find a way. And so we'll talk about well-being at the end of this, but just know that esports, yes, it does encompass video games, but it also has spectators. It's organized. There's revenue involved and there's skill. Yeah, like, and, and a high skill, right? Because we have some skill playing our video games. I grew up playing Halo, played kind of competitively in college. Chris plays a lot of Call of Duty, but the skill that these players have at this level is absolutely insane. Okay, so let's go to the next slide. Awesome. And so this might be a little laggy on your end, um, but I just want to point out, this is kind of what esports competition looks like, right? You see these people practicing their skills. You see them clicking on buttons. You see them uh, talking and communicating. But let's go ahead and move on since we actually have a live presentation of esports behind us, right? Um, another poll? What games are popular? Which game have you heard of? Let's go ahead and pop up the poll and see what games y'all like. Yep, so go to that poll. Check out all those choices. We give you a lot of choices of games. And obviously, we're not going to list every game on there. But we wanted to see which games you've heard of in different parts of the world. I've probably heard of different games. You might play different ones than somebody else in another country. Uh, but certainly, as, as you can see on here, some options, not all the options. Uh, but we wanted to kind of see what you all play and which ones you've heard of. Uh, and so looking at the poll, what do we see, Chris? Yeah, we see um, Call of Duty Boo. overwhelmingly, 77%, and then League of Legends, then Rocket League. And I see some people asking, why not Minecraft or Roblox? That's a great question. We included some of the um, top esports titles, if you will. So right. Roblox and Minecraft, excellent video games, some of the most popular in the world, some of the most popular ever. The ones that you're seeing here are prominent esports titles or popular uh, competitive video games, right? Um, so if you play Call of Duty, you might not know, but there's actually a competitive league called the CDL, the Call of Duty League. And so uh, Free Fire, that's another version of Counter-Strike as well. Yeah. Um, and so you're naming games that, yeah, there are esports surrounding. Some of these that we listed are some of the most popular. We just wanted to see what people liked within chat. And we now know you like Roblox and Minecraft as well. Um, so we can make examples with that. Uh, I used to be a competitive Call of Duty player. I played at one of the highest levels when yep. uh, the CDL was not a thing. Uh, but, you know, it took hours and years of preparation. Joey was a big Halo player. Halo 1, not 2, not 3, not Reach. Halo 1, the only, no, not the only good one, but the best one out there. That was way back in the day. I don't want to age myself, but certainly my favorite game. And, yeah, you all are listing a ton of other games on there. Lots of Valorant. You're still mentioning Fortnite. I see FIFAs. I mean, yeah, like I said, we could have named probably 30 different games. At our university, we compete at the varsity level in seven different titles. Um, we offer players a chance to earn some money while playing at the collegiate level. We play against schools from all over the country across these titles. So there's not just these four or five choices we gave you. There's obviously a ton of options out there, a ton of games being played in high school and in college, as well as the professional level. So certainly, yeah, you're naming all these great ones. Um, but Halo, definitely my jam, definitely the one I grew up with. Still try to play it today, but I got a little busier with some other stuff. Yeah, and I see multiple times in chat people asking what our favorite games are. Mine's Call of Duty. Would you say yours is Halo? My favorite game is the Legend of Zelda series. <laughs> Love Legend of Zelda. Ton of fun. All the games are great. I think Breath of the Wild is probably the greatest game of all time. Uh, but I play a lot of Overwatch right now. Still play some Halo. It's a lot of fun. But certainly, Legend of Zelda, definitely my favorite series of video games of all time. Awesome. And if people really like that answer, they're getting yeah, popped. Yeah, of course they do. It's uh, the best game of all time. And so, yeah, just to recap before we move on, esports and video games or casual gaming are a bit different, right? 
Um, I want to see some of those listed that we just talked about. How are they different as I go back over them before we move on? So remember, esports, I see money over there. Um, organization, right? Yep. Um, we have spectators involved and the skill level. There is a ton of skill involved. And so spectators, great, great, great. I love seeing all these answers. We appreciate the participation. We have a live example behind us at the Amsterdam or the Dutch League of Legends Championship, right? And so now that we can recall what esports are, let's learn about careers in esports and about broadcasting and brand management. Perfect. So another poll for you. Again, we like interaction. We like hearing from you all. Do you think there are career opportunities working in esports beyond being a pro gamer, right? So obviously, what you see behind us, these are pro gamers, right? This is League of Legends. So two teams of five playing against each other. These are professional gamers earning money. They have a salary. They get money for the winnings at tournaments. So they're making a career out of this. That's one option. But there's got to be some other opportunities out there, right? So what do you think? Are there opportunities beyond just playing video games for a career? Let's go to the results and see what you all think. And the results Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Jeez. All right. I think pretty overwhelmingly no. You, no, I'm kidding. You, pretty much everybody said yes. There are a lot of careers in esports beyond being a pro gamer. So what are some of those careers? You're gonna see on this next slide, let's go to the ne next slide. There is a lot of opportunities, boom, right there. These are kind of hard to read. We're not gonna read obviously all of these, but it's a really cool chart that shows you all the different areas for possibly working in and around esports beyond just being that pro gamer. I mean, there's opportunities in broadcast production, event management, there's intellectual property, which means the law side of things. There's human resources, there's management, there's education. There's all these different areas that go into making esports esports. As Chris said, it's not just playing video games. There's a lot more that goes into it. That organized factor, that takes people working behind the scenes that aren't just on the stage playing, right? There's a lot more to it. When I panned over earlier to show you the arena here, you saw the broadcast production side. There are event managers standing at the back with microphones and earphones or ear sets in they listen to each other so they know what's going on to make the event run. So all these different careers exist that aren't just playing games. As William said, play games. You've got to keep playing games. Play with intentionality. It's great to aspire to be a pro gamer, but you've got to understand like the top 0.001% of people make it as a pro gamer as an actual career. Some of them are here right now. There are some former professionals. There are some current professionals. They're here and they'll tell you this is tough to do. And making this a career can be extremely difficult. So have that backup plan. Look at all these other areas you might be interested in that have high paying jobs. You're able to travel. You're still involved with esports, even though you're not competing. You're around it, working events, involved with the great people that work in esports. So it's good to understand that all of these different options you see here are possible opportunities to work in esports. Let's go to the yeah. next slide. And Joey, just so uh, the chat is saying that this is kind of blurry. Okay. Um, so how about you give an overview of just some of those general careers that they might see? Sure, yeah. Sorry, it's a little blurry for you. It's a great chart. We'll try to make sure that we get it out there in a clearer version. You can also look it up online. Uh, it's a popular one that we use. So some of those careers are event management, right? So the people that run the event, get sponsors, get marketing materials out there. They're the tournament organizers, whether it's a LAN event, local area network, which is in person, like you see here, or an online event. Then there's also the broadcast production from shoutcasting to content creation, which Chris is going to talk about in a little bit, but also videography, video editing, uh, graphic design, a lot of areas there. There's the businesses and management side. There's things like uh, trying to sell assets, trying to get sponsors to work with your company, trying to organize and manage a company from hiring a general manager to signing players, working on contract negotiation. There's education, being teachers, working at colleges and high schools. Um, so all of those are just some of the many areas. Coaching, another big one, being a coach for esports. You might have a team, that team needs a coach. So even if you're not playing anymore, you still know about the game. Those are just some of the areas that you can get into. Sorry, it's a little blurry. We'll try to get a clearer version to you so you can have it, because this is something to show your parents. Tell them, I'm not trying to be just a pro gamer. I can still make this a career beyond playing video games. There we go. Yeah, and the, the image looks clear. Like Joey said, broadcast, production, digital media, administration, um, just general media, uh, performance, 
management. All of these different things are areas to go into. And so we'll talk a little bit about it, um, but we can go ahead and move on to the poll question. Right, okay, here you go. Do you think that job opportunities in esports have increased, decreased, or stayed about the same since 2018? So we're trying to see what you think. Do you think all these jobs in esports, do you think they've been about the same in the last three years? Do you think there's been more opportunities in esports in the last three years? Or do you think it's actually gone down? Maybe people don't think there are real careers. Maybe you don't think it's something you could do. Do you think the job opportunities have increased, decreased, or stayed about the same? What, are the, what does the poll say, Chris? Let's go to the Let's results see. here. You want a chance to answer this? It looks like increased. Another easy one. Absolutely. The jobs have increased. So more and more chances to work in esports, doing things that you love to do around something that you're passionate about, like video games and esports. And if there are future careers out there, it's something you can start a job yourself. You can come up with a job. You can come up with a team yourself. Start your own organization. Start streaming yourself, which we're about to get into because there are so many jobs out there and they continue to grow. Yeah, yeah, and I saw a question just now in chat. Are esports live games, uh, I believe was the question. And yeah, I mean, this is again, a great example here at H20 headquarters in Amsterdam. Um, not only is, you know, are esports online, but they can also be in person. And so we can watch it online, but you can also have several hundred people, if not thousands of people watching games in person. So great question. Um, and yes, jobs have increased. All right. So preparing for that career, right? How do you prepare for that career in esports? Go ahead and click for the first one. First one, get experience. One of the things you can do is volunteer at events like you see behind us. Okay, not everywhere are there going to be massive headquarters like this, but you can start your own tournament. You can go to some free tournament platforms online, start your own tournament. You can get your friends together. You can try to organize your own small gaming tournament maybe at your middle school, maybe at your high school, even in college. I mean, you can start getting that experience today working in esports because it's not about just like the skills you learn in a classroom. It's about what you do outside of a classroom that lets you get that real hands-on experience to work in the industry. The second thing is attending events. Go to see esports events. There are professional esports events, homestands, live events, tournaments happening all around the world all the time. Some are huge events. Some are small events, but all these events are good for you to see to understand how an event actually works in esports, because that will give you an understanding about not just how it works, but what those positions might be that you want to get into. Let's go to the next one. Network, talk to people, start meeting people, start working with people, because the people you work with now, you'll end up working with down the road. Esports is a very tight knit community. Video games are a tight knit community of people. It's good to start developing what's called a network of connections from an early age. Start meeting people, start working these events, getting the experience, and keep in touch with those people that you work with. You never know when you need to call on somebody or pull in a favor to help out. So the more people you get to know, the better network you have, the more chances there are to get that job in the industry. And the last one, study. More and more schools are offering esports not just as a competitive platform in schools, but also as an academic area of study. You can get a degree in esports, like you would get a degree in criminal justice, engineering, biology. There are some schools that offer college degrees in esports, especially around that business or production of esports and competitive gaming. So study esports, understand it from a book perspective. William Collis wrote the book of esports. Check that out, read about esports, study it, get experience, attend events, Meet people in the industry, and you will have a great chance to turn esports into a career. Yeah, and th that goes to one of the questions I saw in chat. Um, what university are we at? Just to reiterate, uh, Shenandoah University. Thanks for asking. Um, some other things before we move on, Joey. Not to like cut off this great this <laughs> great conversation. Um, can teenagers get involved? Absolutely. Yeah. Teenagers can sure. Yeah, get involved. You can get involved before you're a teenager. Uh, you can go work events. Go with your parents. Take them with you. Let your parents see what esports actually is because then they'll understand and be really supportive of what you want to do so yes if you're a teenager volunteer at events you can still run online things whenever you want to in your free time when you're when you're a teenager if you're in middle school or high school talk to your teachers see if you can start an esports club at your school there are a lot of ways to get started now you can start streaming you can start video editing graphic design content creation 
all of that, you can start doing now. So there's not an age limit. You can start doing it now, but be careful. Parental permission. We'll talk about that in a little while too. Yep. Next slide. Great. Great job, Joey. All right. After hearing about the different career paths in esports, what would be your preferred esports job? Yeah, there's because a lot of them out there. We talked about a lot of them. So what do you think? Let's see what this audience has for a possible preferred job in esports. What are we looking at here? It's like we got game development and design, great coding. Uh, let's see here. We've got programming. We've got performance, coaching, competition. You got a lot of event management, broadcast production. It looks like the most popular one is game design and development. Yeah, yeah. And so let's see. Yeah, 71% game development and design. Wow, that's overwhelming. And then performance coaching and competition. Nice. And then production and event management. Uh, so we anticipated a lot of you saying content creation and marketing. <laughs> um, so we are going to talk a little bit about content creation and brand development. Um, you can go ahead to the next slide here. Let's see. All right, another poll question. Again, we want this to be super interactive. Have you ever created content? For those of, who, of you who wonder, what is content? This can be a live stream on Twitch, YouTube, one of those. Um, you can make a video on YouTube or other social medias like Instagram, TikTok, anything, right? Digital media content. Have you ever created any content? Go to the poll. Let's see what people are saying. Oh, wow. Okay, so right now, 60% of you, yes. 20%, I want to. 11%, no, that's okay. You still have time. I plan on it, and I don't know how. There's mine. Mine is the 3%, I don't know how. That's why Chris is here to talk about it, because this is a huge part of the industry with a lot of job opportunities. Yeah, and so content creation. Um, we're going to stick on this slide for a while. I used, I had a lot of words on here, but we're just going to have a conversation about it, right? Um, it sounds like a lot of you've already created content. So if you want to start tossing some of the things you've learned through content into the chat, um, maybe the best practices that you use, that'd be awesome as we talk about it. Um, first off, though, you got, you see these these uh, logos here. We have YouTube, we have Twitch, and then the middle one's Facebook Gaming. These historically are the top three live streaming uh, platforms in esports and gaming, right? Twitch is dominating right now with about 70% of the market share. And that's because they were first to market or they're the first ones that existed. Um, YouTube though, and Facebook are growing in popularity. So if you're streaming over on those platforms, it's okay. There's still a big audience for you, right? Um, but, you know, I see invest time. Don't say bad words. Uh, Mixer, Mixer was a thing. <laughs> Mixer is no longer. Nice. Um, they were actually merged with um, Facebook Gaming, for those of who didn't notice, know that. So Mixer was owned by Microsoft, but now Facebook Gaming is working on that platform, and all the creators from Mixer went over to Facebook Gaming. Um, but I'm loving the best practices over here. And I guess to my point is content creation, um, you really need to start with what your purpose is, right? Um, everyone, we run broadcast and production on campus. I make personal content for myself. I help some of our students make content. And everything always goes back to what is the purpose of the content that is being made. Yep. And so the purpose of content starts with, um, you know, why am I putting this out? Is this going to be entertaining? Is this supposed to be informative? Is it going to tell a story? And it's okay if it's just entertaining or funny, right? right? Um, and so, uh, you know, your purpose really defines what kind of content you're going to make. Once you determine your purpose, then you need to start considering ways that you're going to set yourself apart. I really love the comment about not saying bad words when you're creating content. That's called being family friendly, right? And so not only do you need a purpose, you need a way to make yourself unique. Because while there are a ton of people watching, there's millions of people also creating content. And so you have to understand that you have to bring some kind of unique element to it, right? It might be the quality. It might be your editing. It might be that you're just funnier uh, or that you're better at the game. And so if you're not the best at the game, bring another part to the stream that's going to make you stand out, right? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah that's, that's a great point, Chris. And there's so much content out there. And maybe you've seen some, maybe you haven't, but you can check it out. There is so much to do online and engage with it. It's not just gaming on Twitch anymore. There's a lot of variety out there. So find what you like and maybe emulate that to get started in the process. Yeah, and then... Um, if you do start creating content, it, it's best if it's high quality, right? And that doesn't mean that you need a ton of equipment. But if we go to the next slide here, maybe we can see some of the equipment. 
that we use while live streaming. Let's see. Next slide. There Here it is. we go. And so this is a really simple picture of some of the, the stuff that you'll need to create content, right? Um, it has a PC here. You can also play on console, um, gaming chair and gaming desk, or just a chair and a desk, right? You don't have to have gaming specific equipment. Uh, then you need some sort of camera and microphone, again, to take you to that next level. Um, you just start with a microphone, that's okay. You don't have to have a camera. Um, but just know that you can start creating content with very simple equipment. Again, a console, a PC, a gaming chair, a desk, microphone, camera, and then you'll need some sort of editing software, but there's a lot of free editing software out there. Let me see in chat real fast. How many of you edit material? Have you ever edited content? I imagine if you have created content that you've edited. Oh, yeah, 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 yes, yes, yes. I love that. Keep it going, keep it going, keep yes, it going. Yes, 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 train, yes, train. I love that. And so editing is really important. And if you can edit, most likely you will find a job in esports, right? Because again, while this is a live event, it's being broadcast to thousands of people. And like Joey showed you earlier, yep. there's a whole production section. There's a ton of people just working the production here. And so if you can edit, we encourage you to continue to edit. Yep. And Keep if practicing. You, and if you haven't learned how to edit yet, that's okay. You have time. And that's what this presentation is about is teaching you some of those skills that you need to prepare yourself for the industry, right? I'm seeing, yeah, 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 still. I love it. <laughs> And so um, get yourself some, some gaming uh, editing software. I think free versions are like iMovie. Um, there's like free movie makers. Um, and then there's stuff like Premiere Pro where you go to the next level, right? Um, get yourself some gaming equipment, PC, console, camera, and start creating content. Again, with your parents' permission. Don't just start posting stuff online, okay? <laughs> um, let's get our permission from parents first and then start creating content. And so remember, when you're creating content, be unique, um, be, create high quality content. Sorry, I was like, what am I going for here? <laughs> and then have a purpose. Yep. The first thing is have a purpose. Um, and I know that sounds super simple, um, but it's a bigger deal than you think. Your purpose will help you stay consistent. It'll help you put out high quality content and it'll help you grow an audience. I saw someone at the end of William Collis's presentation ask, should we play one game or can we play multiple games? So if you're trying to get better and become a pro at the game, probably just one, honestly. That's all the time you're going to have for have uh, to play. But if you're streaming, you can stream multiple games. The one thing I would encourage you is start with one game and grow an audience with that game. And once you grow an audience that becomes your friend, they'll watch you play anything. So if you love Minecraft, stick with Minecraft until you have a big enough audience that satisfies you. And then start expanding, right? And also start playing other games just because it's more fun. If you get tired of Roblox or Minecraft or whatever game you're playing, it's okay to skip over to another game for a few days, right? And so obviously this, this is common sense stuff, but sometimes we need a reminder that, yeah, you can play multiple games and it creates uh, entertaining content. And so purpose, creativity, and high quality. We can go on to the next one. So let's get beyond gaming a little bit, right? So beyond just streaming, beyond just playing games, what are some healthy lifestyle habits for you? What are some things to keep in mind? So whole question for you. What else do you all like to do besides playing video games? We know that video games are great. We know they're a ton of fun. But we want to hear what else you like to do because that can't be all you do. You will actually be a better gamer if you don't just play games for 10 to 12 hours a day. Practice with intention. Go and work out. Hang out with your friends. Eat healthy. There are other things to do. So what else do you all like to do besides playing video games? For me, it's playing sports. I like listening to music. I don't really hang out with friends. I mean, I'm, I'm old. I don't really have any friends anymore. Um, I like cooking because I like to eat, so I need to cook it to eat it. Uh, movies are good, too, but certainly playing sports is something I always did growing up. I'm a big baseball fan, a big American football fan. Played a lot of basketball because I was tall for a little while. So those were my things. Chris, how about you? Besides playing video games, what do you do? Yeah, I, I love fishing. Uh, so I'm a big fisherman, and I also love getting outside and hiking. Um, so I'll go find new trails in my area or go hike to a lake, right? Yeah. Uh, what a better way to spend your day than fishing and hiking. And I also love playing baseball. Yep. Uh, Joey and I are huge baseball fans, so I love that I saw playing sports as one of the top ones. Um, I see chess. I see coding. Again, find a hobby. Um, 
we're going to talk about it. But if you go to the next slide, Joey's going to talk about digital citizenship and we're going to yeah. talk about well-being here. Yeah, to kind of wrap things up for you guys, we know we've talked a lot about getting into esports beyond gaming, but there is a right way and a wrong way to get into esports. By the way, I saw a lot of people say reading, absolutely a great hobby to have outside of esports. Keep reading books, fiction, nonfiction, read all kinds of stuff. It's going to help you in so many ways as you grow up. So keep on reading as well. Great choice. Uh, but digital citizenship, again, there's a right way and a wrong way that you can play video games and be online. You all, as you're growing up, are probably growing up with computers and iPads and phones and, and, and like things that weren't around 10, 15 years ago. You all need to be very careful with what you're doing online, what you're saying online. Make sure to get your parental permission before you go just putting things online, before you go streaming yourself on Twitch, because you need to be aware of what you're saying, what people can see, and then you need to be careful about what they're saying about you. For instance, don't listen to people all the time, right? You're going to get a lot of a lot of what are called trolls in <laughs> chat that are saying things that aren't true because they're trying to make a name for themselves and trying to be cool, you know, those kind of things. So be aware of what you're putting online because when you think you delete something online, guess what? It's never really deleted. There's always a way for people to find what you said, find things you've posted in the past. So you've got to be very careful with the things that you say online, the things that you post online, the content you create. So always get your parents' permission. Your parents are there to help. You might get frustrated at times. I've got kids. My kids get frustrated with me already. But it's okay. Your parents want what's best for you. They want you to be careful. And you all, as you're going through school, as you're doing things online, the biggest thing is just be smart. Just know who's out there. Know what's out there. Engaging in social media, talking to your friends, watching things on YouTube, going on Twitch, all these different apps that are out there now and will be out there down the road. Just be careful of the things that you say, the things that you do, because they can always come back around five years after the fact, 20 years after the fact. So these can have major impacts for you down the road. So what I'm saying is just be careful out there. Get your parents permission before you do things, because a lot of fun you can have if you do it the right way. Yeah. Yeah. All great points, Joey. And you see me glancing to the side again. I am just constantly reading <laughs> chat. I'm loving the participation over here. Um, Part of what we've been talking about or undertone of all of it is also well-being, yep. right? I think that everything you just said about digital citizenship, amazing points, Joey. Um, but we also have to be taking care of ourselves. Like you were saying, being safe in the online space and, and you know, making being a good digital citizen, part of that fits into wellness. Yep. Um, and a lot of stuff that y'all are asking William Collis also fits into wellness. Um, I heard him talking about trying to find time and balance in his life and and you know, even if you're playing a game for a really long time, finding ways to relax and other things. That all goes into wellness. And if you look here on the left, we have eight dimensions of wellness that I talk a lot about with our esports athletes at our university. Um, the eight, I'll just rattle them off real fast. Our physical wellness, intellectual wellness, emotional wellness, uh, spiritual wellness, environmental wellness, uh, financial wellness, occupational wellness, and social wellness. Woo. Wow. Woo. And so... What, what we call holistic wellness or achieving all of these is really important. And so even if you're grinding a game and you're trying to go pro or you're creating content, you've been editing for hours, sometimes you got to step away, right? And that's to protect our overall wellness. And so seeing that y'all like to hang out with friends is amazing. That feels social wellness. You need that support system. Even if you're grinding a game, try to do it with friends. Try to find a support system to be there for you. Physical wellness. This is about working out and being physically active. So playing sports, great. Most of us are physical, physically active and well. But this also takes into account eating healthy and, and you know, trying to um, implement practices that prevent us from getting sick. And so just um, exercising, eating well, and taking time to stretch and warm up before and after gaming. Intellectual wellness, all of you are intellectually well. You're here. You're learning. <laughs> you could be doing anything else right now. And we appreciate you being here. Emotional, the support system really helps with this. Um, a lot of times we call this subjective well-being and it's just about how we feel. And so if you're feeling a little down, make sure to talk about that, right? And, and acknowledge that. Again, if you're playing a game and it's not going so well and it's negatively affecting your well-being, feel free to go play another game. Go take a walk. Do things to enhance your well-being overall. Um, right now, occupational, financial well-being, stuff like that, that'll come later in life. But just know that there are careers in esports, so you can be financially and occupationally well 
through esports and gaming. And then environmental, um, this is obviously like planting trees and stuff like that and, and recycling, but it's also about the ergonomics of your station. So being environmentally aware means, hey, let me make sure my chair is adjusted correctly. Let me make sure the screen's at the right height. Let me make sure my mouse and keyboard aren't negatively affecting my wrist health or my finger health, right? These are things we start thinking about at the professional level. And so, yes, digital citizenship is very important. Make sure you're not being a troll <laughs> and, and, and practicing best behavior online, but also be taking care of yourself offline as well, right? And so we wanted to end with that. We know y'all have been sitting through a couple hours of presentations now. We have people that are about to come in here. Um, I think we might do the Q&A first. Um, if not, we'll do the quiz. But we appreciate y'all's time today. Um, we look forward to answering some of y'all's questions. There we go. Now we're big. Hey. Awesome. <laughs> we look forward to answering some of your questions. Um, and hopefully y'all got something out of that. I know there were some technical difficulties. We apologize. We're not at our usual stations. We have high-definition cameras and <laughs> microphones back home. Um, but here, let me adjust a little bit. There you go. We can see the pros. Oh, it's empty right now. They're <laughs> in a commercial break. So they'll be right back. <laughs> Uh, guys, thank you so much. That was phenomenal. And please don't worry about any technical difficulties. You're in the thick of things. You're showing us just where the action <laughs> happens. And we're like listening to you. And I've been listening to every word of what you've been saying backstage. And my God, has the world of gaming changed? And I'm an old timer myself. I started playing many, many moons back to know where it's come to, the opportunities, the world that awaits the gamers, and of course, going pro and the various opportunities kids have with it nowadays. I think it's incredible. And you guys are living a great life. You're traveling the world. You're in uh, the oh, Dutch man. land right now. Yeah. You know, going to different places. This is this is amazing. I mean, I, I think the kids have learned a lot. I have learned a lot. Thank you so much for that. But guys, you know, we also are putting the kids to a slight test, which is a fun test, which is a quiz where we're going to be putting forward some questions for them. And we want to give them a chance to win these fabulous gifts that are going to be heading their way if they get the right answer. So, um, Chris and Joey, if you're ready, we're going to ask yep. you to help them out a bit. Okay, the first question, the amount of people that play Roblox monthly is about the same as the population of which country? Your yeah, options probably. are USA, Brazil, India, or Japan. <laughs> All right, let's see the poll. Let's see which way the poll is leaning. Um, people are leaning towards the USA. You guys yeah, would like to give them some clues? Yeah, so... Um... Maybe India has 1.6 billion, right? 1.6 billion that, or 1.3 billion actually is where we're at. So I'm, I'm just thinking, that's a that's a big number. Yeah, and be thinking maybe a little south of the United States. Um, hint. Ooh. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> right. not quite not quite as many people as India, but more yeah. people than the United States actually. So if you want to adjust your answer, um, if you have time. Let's Do it see. now. Oh, Brazil. It is Brazil. That's right. My so Roblox. God. Yep. Yeah. Roblox has 202 million active users in a month. And that's about the same as Brazil at 210 million. And you see what the other countries have right there. Yeah. 1.4, 330, and 126. And uh, well, 15% of our young minds got that. No worries, guys. Congratulations <laughs> to this 15%. But also, there are some remaining questions where you can come back and also aim to get the prizes. Okay. On which day do you think Twitch viewership in arts is the high is the highest? Is it Sunday, Saturday, Thursday, or Friday? Give it a good thought. Give it a good thought, guys. What do you think it could be? Is it the weekend vibes that gets people on Twitch? Is it midweek? What could it be? Guys, Chris, what do you feel? Joey? Oh, well, so I thought this one was gonna be really tough, but I think I think chat might be on to it here, Samir. I and it makes sense, right? When you start thinking about viewership, and I'm not going to give away the answer yet. I'm going to give more people time. But what days do you have more free time? Think about that. Uh, what days yes. are you in school? What days are you out of school? Um, so that kind of lends to this answer, right? If you start thinking about it. But the next day from Sunday is a working day going back to school. Saturday could also be a great answer. But let's see what the right answer is. 64% going with Sunday. And Sunday it is. Well done. Well done, people. 70.29 million hours. Oh my God. 500 million hours of Twitch watched weekly. The highest number of hours are mentioned below. That is just incredible. All right, guys, all right, guys. Next question coming on your screens. Here we go. Okay, this is interesting. About what percentage of gamers in the world are women? Yes, women. 10 to 15%. Is it 20 to 25%? Is it 40 to 45%? Or is it 70 to 75%? Now, there's a misnomer that uh, 
women don't play that much. This is a boy's world. But let's see what the right answer is. Guys, um, you want to like guide them towards this? Is it less? Sure. Is it yeah, more? It's... No, leaning towards, yeah. This is, this is a tough one because if you look behind us on the stage, when the gamers get back out there, there are actually no women on the stage for this esports competition. But don't let that fool you into what the correct answer is here because obviously the answer is much higher than zero and it's probably higher than you think it is for this answer. Let's see what the right answer is, gents. On our screen, 40 to 45%. Wow, of the gaming population globally. Now, this is amazing. Overall, it would be estimated that there would be 2.81 billion total gamers globally in 2021. Incredible. So women are playing, men are playing, everyone is gaming and everyone's having fun. The next question on our screens, here is it. Okay, this is interesting again. How far would a gamer have to walk in the game to reach the end of the Minecraft world? Is it 2,000 <laughs> kilometers? Is it 12,000 kilometers? 8,000 kilometers? Or is it 5,000 kilometers? We're talking all the way to the end of Minecraft. That's Those are some serious distances, gents. Serious distances. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and so there's a misconception, Samir, that actually the game is just goes forever, right? But yeah. there is an end where if you go, the coding will start mess up, messing up and, and there's no more map. Wow. And so it, it does take a long time. Um, but I think I think our, our audience is on to something here. They are. Do they smell it? Do they do they get, get it right? If they're saying 12,000 kilometers, let's see what the right answer is. The right answer, it is 12,000 kilometers. My God. If play, players walk approximately, that's 12,000 kilometers, 7,500 miles, they can reach the end of the world. That is almost four times the size and the width of India. Incredible, guys. <laughs> Incredible. All right, one more question. One more question coming away. Okay. The PlayStation 2 is the best-selling console of all time. If you were to add up the weight of all the PS2 sold, it would be about the same as how many blue whales the heaviest <laughs> animal on the, yeah. on the earth. It's an interesting one. And, and 200, so you, uh, 500, 1,000, or 2,000. Yes. What do you say? Just so, yeah, sorry not to interrupt. Just so you know, a blue whale weighs approximately, what, 400,000 pounds? And so in... Yes. Kilograms, that's like 130,000 to 180,000. Um, just yeah. so you all know, if that puts things in perspective. Yeah, take out your calculators, so kiddos. Take out your calculators. <laughs> Work it out there. <laughs> okay, a lot of them are saying uh, 2,000. So 2,000 blue whales would be equal to the weight of the number of PS2 sold in the world. It is that, heavy. That's a heavy number. Let's see. Drum what roll? is the heavy answer? Hey, yes, it is. It is. My God. They sold over 155 million consoles and weighed about 2.2 kgs. That's 4.85 pounds per console. One blue whale weighs approximately, you said it absolutely right, 130 to 180,000 kgs. And that is just incredible. The Nintendo Switch, of course, the most popular current gen soul, uh, console, has sold about 89 million units. So people are buying these. And well, <laughs> we're buying the fact that you know what the answers are. So well done. To all the young minds out there, I think they did exceptionally well. What do you guys feel? Oh yeah, uh, that was great. That was awesome. Honestly, we picked some really hard ones, and we were trying to get creative with it. And yeah. we were afraid it might be too hard, but it sounds like we have some experts out there. <laughs> we do in the blue whale department. That too. That's right. <laughs> all right, guys. Yeah. All right, guys. Uh, now um, you, you've given us an insight into the world of gaming, but there. Lovely questions that have been put up by the students there, and they want to ask you some questions. So we have a poll round where it's going to be Q&A with Joey and Chris. And we got uh, some questions lined up. The first question for you guys, here it is on your screen. Um, I want to ask you the first one itself because I want that answered. Uh, when was it that you discovered your passion towards gaming and eventually esports from a hobby? How does it become something that's a passion? And then it becomes esports. That's something that you do for the rest of your lives. Yeah, yeah. Um, so... I developed my passion for gaming when I was about 12. I was hanging out with my friends and um, and um, just fell in love with Call of Duty. I was like, I love the skill, I love the competition. It wasn't until I was about 14 that I fell in love with competitive gaming. Um, and from 14 to 18, I played semi-professionally against some of the top talent in the world. Um, and then it wasn't until I was an adult about five years ago that I fell back in love with it. And now I get to travel the world and it actually pays my bills to love esports, right? And so 
I fell in love with it at an early age as far as gaming goes. It took several years to get into competitive gaming, but just keep at it. Find what game you love and try to practice with intent. William Collis talked a lot about this, um, but practicing with intent, having a goal going into each, each section so you don't have to play for 12 hours, but practice for two instead, right? Um, so pick a game, fall in love with it, and just practice with intent. And trust me, you will you will get really good at it. Yep, I think I would just add kind of the same thing. I started really young. Um, right now we're, we're about to do something different. We're gonna move a little bit to finish the Q and A, <laughs> but I just wanna say I started when I was really young. Um, the, the, the event is moving around here right now. Never stop playing, found something that kind of turned that passion into a career. Go confidently into what you wanna do and you will find that path. But I started at a young age and I've been playing ever since. Um, and Samir, as you're looking at the next question, we're going to move to a new location. So hopefully it won't make you too sick. But let's move on to that new location. All right. Looking forward to it. We're liking what we're seeing <laughs> behind you as well. And just to get the views or whatever we can see around is just fantastic. Now, while they're moving to the new location, I'll tell you all that the quiz has happened. And hope you have answered the questions for the quiz correctly. Uh, stay tuned, of course, to know we're going to announce the winners of eSports Lab Quiz rounds in our next event. So lots of giveaways away to you all. And I think that... Uh, we're not giving away too much by, uh, by by letting our gents move to another location now. Okay, we're going to move to the second set of questions while you guys uh, choose on the poll of what you would want. Uh, how do you learn, evaluate new games to play? What characteristics of games make you want to play them professionally versus casually? Which game is your personal favorite game? What are the features that you think are worth the gamer's attention? And how do you combine different aspects of a game like codes, functions, characteristics, stories, sounds, animations, etc. and make it a single usable program. Now, when I look at the poll, I think 73% of you guys want to ask, uh, how do you learn, evaluate new games to play? What characteristics of games make you want to play them professionally versus um, versus casually? All right, let's see. Um, hopefully, Joey and Chris have uh, have got themselves hooked up in another spot. Another spot. You guys can hear us loud and clear? Yeah. Is it too loud out here? No, it's perfect. The louder, the better. We're liking it. Awesome. Yeah. No, so we are out in the live event, y'all. Look, so the event organizer actually let us come out to the live event. So if you look, there's tens of, uh, not tens of thousands, but hundreds of people here, uh, which is really cool. Um, so wow. please, please let us know if it's too loud. Um, we will move on. But the question is, is how do you learn and evaluate new games to play? What char characteristics yeah. of games make you want to play them professionally versus casually? That's a really great question. Joey, do you have any insight on this? I mean, the, really, it's what is fun, right? You have to have that passion for that gaming. And so when you're playing a game, if it's not fun for you, stop playing it because you won't have passion in it. We tried to force some games on our kids when we started in esports, and they didn't like it. And so if you're not a fan of that game, if it's not just fun to you, then what you need to do is stop playing it and find something else. Um, as William said, accessible is great as well. But the bottom line is if you're not having fun doing it, play a different one because there are millions of games out there. Everybody can find something fun for them. Chris? Yeah, I think a lot of times when I'm looking at a game, I ask myself three questions. Remember these three questions that will help you a lot. How do I interact with my teammates? How do I interact with my enemies? And how do I interact with the map? Okay. And so uh, when I coach, I introduce those topics to a lot of the youth that we coach. And it helps you understand the game a lot better. So, for example, Call of Duty, I really understand how the map works. I love the teamwork and the camaraderie. And I can understand what my enemies are going to do next. That's why I was able to compete at a top level. There's other games where we have not been able to compete, like uh, Rainbow Six Siege. I don't know if anyone's ever heard of that. That's another first-person shooter. I know what my teammates are going to do. I hardly know what my enemies are going to do, and I have no map awareness. And so it's really hard for me to compete at the top level. Yeah, I know it's blurry, y'all, but it's okay because we know the question, right? And so um, think of those three things. That's how I evaluate a game, and that's how I pick what game I want to compete in. Um, if you if you pick a game and you're lacking in one of those elements, work on it. And then if you find that you're not really overcoming that, you might want to try other games just to see if you're better at one of those elements on it, right? Do you agree with that, Joey? Completely agree. Yep. And we know it's blurry, but that's okay because we hear the questions. Um, that's that's fine, right? We're going to get through this. That's what esports is about sometimes. So that doesn't <laughs> matter. Um, but yeah, completely yes. agree with what Chris is saying. 
Absolutely. Being on the move and being in the thick of the action right now. Guys, don't worry about the blurriness. I got all the questions here with me. I'll see them out whenever you can't see them or anybody else can't see them. But right now, we move on to the next one, which is esports in uh, Korea. Uh, this we touched upon earlier in our questions. There's a misconception about gaming being a boys thing. How would you address this gender biasness? Uh, what are the career options or opportunities that one can explore under esports? What are the qualities obtained from gaming esports that can help a child in any career aspect? Okay. Um, once again, leaning towards um, the aspect of it being a misconception about it being a boys thing. How would you address this gender biasness? Guys, over to you. Yeah. And Samir, is it still okay in here? I know there's some stuff going on in the back. I just want to make sure that we're coming through clear. Um, we can come through back clear. To, uh, Okay. Coming Perfect. through clear, there's a right dosage of just excitement right behind you, which is keeping <laughs> us also at the edge of our seat. We're loving it. Go for it. All right. Perfect. Love the chat uh, feedback. Fine, my dude. Appreciate you. Um, so I actually teach a lot this is about this a lot, Samir, in my class. And um, yeah. the, the misconception is that, you know, is that women don't participate in gaming or esports. Yeah, that's a misconception. We saw 40 to 45 percent of gamers are considered are female, right? And so, what we've seen is gaming culture has really started to become more inclusive and start to embrace that diversity that we're seeing. Um, like Joey said, right now we have no women on stage. That doesn't mean that they're not competing, right? And so, as the gaming culture has become more inclusive, we've seen more women start competing at the casual level. So I think that in a few years, we're going to see a ton of women competing at the pro level because they're going to get better and better over time, right? They're kind of new to this gaming thing. And so it's yeah. okay we don't see them on stage now because I think that they're going to catch up very quickly. We actually see women dominating a lot of mobile games because women prefer mobile gaming. Um, and that's because a lot of the motives behind gaming for women are different than men. Um, historically, we've seen, seen men really want to be the ultimate gamer, right? Well, women want strategy, they want puzzles, they want to learn. And so we're seeing these mobile games really um, are perfect for women because a lot of them involve a ton of strategy and puzzles, and they're starting to dominate these fields. And so I think that women will um, reach the main stage at the professional level soon because the industry has started to become more and more diverse. Joey, what do you think? Yeah, great points by Chris. Um, the the thing I would add to that is that schools are trying to get more involved with this. A lot of colleges, a lot of high schools are offering unique opportunities for female gamers. Um, so we're seeing that help a little bit. Um, there are scholarships right now. There are job positions offered just for women in gaming. So a lot of organizations are addressing this problem, trying to figure out how we get more women to be more visible in gaming. Because we know they're there. 40 to 45% yeah. of gamers are female, like we said earlier. So how do we get that visibility up? It's about offering them opportunity, creating a culture that is welcoming to them, and then having them as a major part of what's going on and highlighting all their accomplishments. So we've got to get the word out about it to help get more women visible in esports and gaming. All we should say by the end of it is go girl power. Go girl That's power. Right. Enjoy yourself. And uh, it's not just a boy's territory gaming. Everybody can enjoy it. The set for your experiences and the evolution of gaming. Is gaming an expensive passion? Would you recommend equipment or software that can be used as an alternate and does not cost extravagant for someone who wants to kickstart their gaming career? How much traction does eSport as an industry get from students who choose gaming as a career? And what is the key advice you would like to give to your parents, uh, to, to the parents about the vastness of eSports whose children are passionate about gaming? So I think, I mean, it, the, the first one's a very important one, guys. And I think people want to know about this as an expensive passion. What would you recommend as an alternate and uh, to reduce the cost, that the, the extravagant cost that gaming has for somebody who wants to kickstart their gaming career? Definitely. And we're going to come inside. We know it's really loud out there. So we're going to come in here again. It, it's kind of a unique situation since we are behind the scenes here. Um, you know, Joe, you can get in right here. And so, all right. Of passion. Question. Yeah. Um, sure. Yes. So it can be used. And then, just hold on for uh, a second, guys. I think I think so the internet is slightly we're... slightly unstable where you are. So your voice is Here. breaking for a. Yeah, it's coming and going. But if we just stay still, say something now. Can y'all hear us now? Yes, we can. Go for it. Okay. 
Okay, I apologize for that. I think it's because we moved. Sorry about that. But I didn't no want y'all to stay out there. It was getting really loud. Um, but yeah, and so it, it's blurry again. It's okay. Um, but we deal with this a lot because we work in education, right? And our students also want to save money. And so, yes, there are some things that we can suggest um, as far as gaming. Um, some free things that you can work on is um, 3D Aim Trainer. Um, it's an online uh, software that you can download on your PC, and it actually helps you train your aiming, right? And so if you play a, a shooter game, Overwatch, Fortnite, um, or even if you don't, you're able to use 3D Aim Trainer to really uh, hone your talent and, and practice on a daily basis. Can you still hear us, Samir? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Okay, awesome. Um, again, ask before you download any software. Um, if you want to create content, um, Streamlabs OBS is a free to use platform and you can record you can record videos right there on your computer, but you can also broadcast live. And so we recommend downloading some kind of free software like Streamlabs OBS or uh, OBS Studios. Um, OBS is a little more advanced, so I would start with Streamlabs and then work your way up. Um, and so Aim Trainer is free. Streamlabs is free to create content. We talked about iMovie and stuff earlier. It's free. Uh, but again, ask your parents about creating content. Start creating content on social media platforms. If you have social media and um, you're of age, I would recommend you start having a social media presence. We talked about networking, right? And so um, get permission. Make sure it's okay to start posting. Start creating free content online. Um, that's a huge ask. And I would say on equipment that for you could say it's okay to use consoles and not piece the whole time, right? This can be expensive for a high-end gaming PC. Playing on a console, you can stream on a console still. So you don't have to have a really expensive $3,000 US dollar PC. You can get a console. You can get a cheaper PC to get started um, because some of that other stuff can be very, very expensive. So there are definitely alternatives that fit every budget. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, it was a pleasure chatting with the both of you. Before you guys go, any last piece of advice uh, to the young minds, to the young aspiring gamers who want to enter this world? Yeah, I mean, listen, so I know the quality has been awful because we've been bouncing around and everything. Um, but the main thing was, is you can have a career in future in esports. Um, you know, there's a negative stigma or people feel negative about gaming sometimes. It doesn't have to be that way. And I would say continue to educate yourself about esports and gaming and then continue to learn through esports and gaming, right? We always say learn through gaming because it's a fun way that you can learn a lot of valuable topics. And so continue to game, continue to try to find ways to learn through it, and then teach others why gaming and esports is so valuable. Yep. Only thing I would add is that, like Chris said, we know it's been chaotic. We know that sometimes <laughs> it was blurry. Sometimes our voice were breaking up. That's what the reality of esports can be, though. That's the reality of any job that we have with technology. Things go wrong. You need to find a way to try to make it work as best you can. Get ready to be chaotic. Get ready to be comfortable being uncomfortable because there are so many good opportunities out there, even when things go wrong, even when it's blurry or buggy. Esports can be a lot of fun. Follow your passion. Use it as an educational opportunity. Right. Do things the right way. Be a, a healthy gamer with healthy gaming habits and see that there is so much more to esports than just gaming and playing video games. Chris, Joey, you both are absolute rock stars. Thank you so much for giving us your valuable time. And we won't take any more of it because we know just outside the closed doors of where you are, there's a contest happening. There's a mega event going on. There's It's loud. <laughs> yeah. There is fun. You guys get right back there and we really hope to see you soon. On this platform again, you've uh, intrigued a lot of minds today. Mine definitely for sure. I'm amazed at the world of gaming and the tremendous opportunities out there. But you guys are living the gamer's dream. Enjoy yourself and we'll see you really soon. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, thank you Thanks so much, y'all. Have a great night. Well, there you have it, folks. I mean, it's so wonderful to learn something new. This, this platform is not just for all of you. I am having a tremendous time learning wonderful things, whether it be music, whether it be art, whether it be about space, and now about the world of gaming. Tremendous opportunities lie right in front of you. But remember, 
whatever you do, take your parents' consent, do it for a certain number of hours, enjoy it, explore the opportunity. And in the end, if you really want to pursue it, well, go out there and do it. It's not just something you do for fun. As all of them were saying, it's a full-time play that you have to get involved in. Many hours of work, many hours of commitment. But that, all of you will do. For us now, I've had an amazing time. A final reminder for this amazing trial offer that we are running. Head to the lobby to get the links, guys. We will see you on the next edition of Creator Space in the month of November. And of course, registration for the same will be open soon. You guys have a good night and a good day, no matter where you are in the world. The next time you come, we'll let you know who the winners are. This is Samir Kaur to say, adios. I want the real stuff, everybody listen up Cause I'll only say it once I'm gonna show you all the path If you want it bad I'm gonna show you every side Yeah, how you can get it back Yeah, cause I ain't never done I'll be number one Working mellow hard until I get just what I want Yeah, rise just like the sun Yeah, fatal like a gun Shooter's gonna shoot and I'm gonna shoot until I fall yeah. Always do it on my own So I gotta get through it And the only thing I know is to love what I'm doing Never give up, never slow till I finally prove it Never listen to the no's, I just